Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 567-0560 toll free for Nathan Brown or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. It's Friday, you bastard. Ever wonder what happened to the British supergroup Oasis? No. Lots of people thought they'd finally run out of ways to rip off the Beatles. Not even close. Oasis is back with a new CD that's like nothing you've never heard before. It's Oasis. Don't let it be. Be united. Oasis, Don't Let It Be, gives you a chance to listen over and over again to incredibly original songs like this. I'd like to be beneath the surface of the ocean in an eight-armed sea creature's cultivation patch with you. Oasis, Don't Let It Be, will move you. It will astound you. It will make John Lennon spin in his grave. And at the conclusion And look for Noel Gallagher's new solo LP, Abbey Highway, on Snapple Records. All right. The only thing uh, I despise more than Oasis is Russ Oasis. It's 10.02 at 5.60. Do they have any spots on this station? Uh-huh. I always like that, Russ. You know what? Good guy. Who's worth, uh, what, $50, $80 billion? Him and his good buddy, Joey Reynolds. They're my favorites, those two. So start the morning with the facts here. And by the way, you know, I don't want to nitpick. I just catch the last couple of minutes there of the morning show on the monitor here when we actually have to finally put the monitor up to find out if we're on the air or not, which sometimes we're not. And they're talking about the uh, Belmont Stakes tomorrow, which Dave Johnson, I guess, will be calling later on, we assume today, maybe, or maybe, I guess he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And uh, at any rate, so then uh, Geldy says, uh, if that horse is running, uh, named after me, that's Stephen Horse. And Defoe, who among the three, at least Joe and Geldy admit they know nothing about horse racing. And Defoe, who's supposed to be, doesn't he do, didn't he always do that Calder show? Uh-huh. And all uh, the paramutual shows? Uh-huh. Isn't he supposed to be the degenerate gambler in that group? Uh-huh. He says, oh, I think that uh, Stephen got even dropped out. I mean, see, if I'm going to be doing a show... Pre- pretending to talk about sports, and in this town you're really only pretending. But if I'm going to be doing that, wouldn't I like clip this thing, the entries out of the newspaper, since it's in every paper in America out of the sports section, so that I would know that post 11 is Stephen got even with Shane Sellers? Wouldn't I probably do that? Uh-huh. No, of course not, because this is QAM and we don't give a crap. I found that bizarre. Maybe that's why he's losing his ass. Maybe that's why Defoe's ballooning up like that. Frustration. You know when you got to work 70, 80 different jobs in six day, seven days a week to eke out a living and you're plunging your lungs out? Of course, I bet you he didn't lose no 2700 uh, bucks in Vegas, did he? Do you think so? No. In one trip? In one hour. So I start with the facts this morning, which is uh, kind of interesting. And I think it bears out what I've always known, and that is that the people out there, they just don't understand one thing. It's a radio show. Don't you understand that? You get that? It's... No. A radio show. Don't you possibly... Stupid, 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 idiotic jerk. Don't you get it? It's a radio show. Well, anyway, Peter, who says he starts out by saying, I'm a big fan and listen regularly in my car and laugh at your stuff and enjoy intelligent discussion of many worthwhile topics. Intelligent discussion of many worthwhile topics. I always tell my friends about things you say and love your wordplay. Well, maybe he's one of the few who actually understands what I'm saying, because I've noticed recently that about 70% of what I'm saying goes sailing right over a lot of people's heads, just flying, floating right over their heads like a cloud in the sky. But then Peter goes on after a great opening paragraph to say, listening to you yesterday, it was evident that the recent ratings drop upset you greatly. (laughs) Right there, you started losing it, Peter. Because one one thing that Peter evidently, he hasn't been listening. He's a loyal listener, but he'd never heard me say, I don't give a sh** anymore. Right. We don't care. In fact, I said that yesterday when I announced the trend came out. We don't care. Uh, Do we give a crap? No. 
In fact, when I left here yesterday, there was Greg and Screw Ann and Gary Sarner and Bluff all standing out there in the parking lot. And I said, you know, it's good that we had a crappy train on this station for a change. It'll make everybody a lot more humble. It makes some of you have to work a lot harder. I said that. And they kind of looked at me and went, like that. As if, what you be talking about, man? At any rate, uh, Peter goes on to say, as far as the ratings drop, since Peter obviously don't understand the ratings, and most people around here don't get it either. He doesn't realize that it was that racing show on Saturday morning that killed us. But anyway, he says, I have two plausible answers. One is the uh, incessant playing of anal noise carts that I don't like to hear. Okay? I switch to a news station when they come on. I don't know if uh, others do as well, but they're unpleasant. I don't know why you play them so often. How do you switch to a news station when when that comes on? Huh? You got to move fast. You got to really move like crazy, like wildfire. Oh, oh. Now, did Peter come back? Did he just come back, huh? Yes. Oh, geez. There he goes again. Maybe you could give people a heads up before you fart. Okay. Look out. Watch it. Cut one for Christ. Cut one for the Lord. Don't leave out the Virgin Mary. Absolutely correct, sir. I don't know why you play them as often. And then number two, he says, is if that weren't bad enough, he says Hank is ruining the station in general. Why did all of a sudden, out of nowhere, after all this time, did they just decide to pick on poor Hank? Maybe because he's out of town. Hank is ruining the station in general. He's outdoing himself with his incredible rudeness and complete disregard for his listeners who support him and the rest of you at QAM. He needs to be sent out to pasture, it says, or at least to New York to go to the Belmont. Sincerely, Peter, with actually with a last name, so this is obviously a very thoughtful <laughs> fax from a guy who's a loyal <laughs> listener, but doesn't like those anal noise cards. He can't <laughs> stand them. I, I don't get it. What's the problem <laughs> with that? Yesterday, was it yesterday or was it on Wednesday? The guy was all bent out of shape about penis. Remember that? Or was that the identical twin that was, oh, that was on Wednesday at the end of the show. He said it was bent out of shape, hooked to the left, like a golf shot, hooked to the left. Damn it. Hate when that happens, don't you? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Peter. Didn't warn you that time. Man, everybody is so uptight in this world, you know, especially in this freaking country of ours. Just because everybody's rolling each other's brains out for Christ, what are you worried about, Peter? Let's see if anybody else out there complains about the anal noise cards. I bet you that most of our crowd likes the anal noise cards. You want to bet on that? I'd be I'd be willing to bet a hell of a lot of your money. Well, I don't have much left after losing 2700 bucks in Vegas. I'd be willing to bet a lot of your money that the audience likes the anal noise cards. Come on, real quick response here. Let's go. Yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down on the <laughs> anal noise cards for Jesus. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line. Because if the audience don't like them, I, mean, I, I can always <laughs> cut them. Huh? Look at that. You know, and, and like yesterday, everybody's going on about how much they love Jim Mandich. I listened to the Mad Dog going home. What did I tell you before? They love him. He gets no calls. He gets no calls. He was pumping the numbers so hard, I thought he was going to have a hernia. No calls. QAM fart line. <laughs> All right. Good one. Excellent. <laughs> oh, sorry, Peter. Peter just turned to IOD. Sorry about that. Okay, stay. hang in there, okay? We'll take a little poll on this. Kill some good time. And you notice I'm really distraught about those ratings. Yeah. I'll explain to you in a minute what happens when you have a month like that with the ratings. I'll explain to you for those who are uninitiated, including some of my fellow uh, broadcasters in this town, so-called. Lorenzo's Italian Center has got a new smoked fish department within their fresh seafood department. Now, check it out, as George would say. Come and meet Pauly, the expert smoked fish counter person. Hand sliced Nova or Lux, regularly six ninety nine a quarter pound, now only four ninety nine a quarter pound. And you get an eighth of a pound of cream cheese free when you buy that good stuff. Kippered salmon, regularly twenty dollars a pound, now only four forty nine for the quarter pound. Hand sliced sable, regularly nineteen dollars a pound, now just four twenty nine for a quarter pound. Also smoked whitefish, five ninety nine a pound, and homemade whitefish salad, only seven ninety nine a pound. And by the way, thanks for Todd for putting a nice new neatly typed copy of this so I can read it. Not in the copy file. Did he do it? No. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> Mom and Dad were playing tag right there on the bed. 
Mommy, it was our booby at the pillow for daddy's head. Mommy's head was bobbing. She almost got whiplash. I don't know what she was drinking, but she got a milk mustache. Peeping through the keyhole, ain't sure what I see. But I sure do like it more than anything on TV. Mom and Dad were hooked together like my Lincoln Logs. Last time I saw something like that, Mom was yelling at the door. Dad was breathing heavy. Mom was on her knees. He must have had a boo-boo cause she kissed him where he pees. Peeping through the keyhole, watching Mom and Dad. Peeping through the keyhole, the most fun we ever had. But we watched a little longer, and I started to get sick. If Daddy's name is Elmer, why Mom asked for Dick? Daddy groaned and his eyes rolled back. Mommy wanted more. She climbed back on top of him, but all he did was snore. Peeping through the keyhole, as the minutes pass. I can't wait to try this out on some girl in my class. Well, I can't wait to try this out on some girl in my class. 1014 at 560 WQAM. QAM Fartline, hello. Hi, Neil. How are you? Okay, sir. Great, this is Andy. Um, listen, I wanted to... <laughs> Anyway, here's a, a fax. Miami Traveler Group abused in Venezuela. And uh, this whole thing, is, you know, about that story that Sam was telling us about on Monday or Tuesday, the day after the holiday, Tuesday. And uh, you're all full of crap, okay, all you Cubans that were on that plane because Sam was on a plane. He said you were rowdy and obnoxious, and they should have thrown your ass out the door while the plane was in the air. And uh, whatever, however they treated you there, more power to them. You deserve it, and then some. How do you like that? So maybe you can fool some of these, uh, you know, bleeding hearts here in this town. You can't fool us here at QAM. We got our eye on it. By the way, speaking of having our eye on it, greatest news of the century. Kid Curry from Power 96, my best close personal friend, comes in this morning to tell me an amazing story. He had dinner last night with uh, one of the great singers in the world. How long is it going to take for you to open up your mouth, huh? I'm biting my lip. Yeah, he's biting it. My close personal friend, almost as close and personal as uh, Kid Curry. He had dinner with my good buddy Enrique last night, who is obsessed, who loves this show. I told you that. What a relationship, you know? He loves me, I love him. He can't sleep for shit. Yeah, that's what you think. Big in Denmark, by the way. Oh, yeah. He's big with the Great Danes. They know their music and in the Denmark. And the Spaniels are pretty good on Enrique, too. Just look at yeah. I love Enrique. I'm sorry. I don't care what you say. See, yeah, I have. Just um, like his feet. I have some of the. I don't. I don't know about his feet. His feet. Yeah, his feet are pretty good. That's what Joe said. He does have a very small penis, so maybe that's why. Maybe that's why we have this bond between us, uh, yours truly and Enrique, huh? Guys with small penises have to kind of like uh, stick together, so to speak. No, it's another one of those relationships, you know, where he's obsessed with me and I'm obsessed with him, but in different ways. You've seen those kind of relationships right here this week, right? In this you, you don't know. With what? About Enrique. Maybe he's got the hots for me. That's true. That's it's right. possible. It's, uh, you know, why the it's hell ha- not? It's happened before. Of course. All the time. So, Enrique, if you're listening, God bless you, sweetheart. He is the best. He's, uh, he's uh, everything you could ever want and then some. And he's kind of, like, ambiguous. You know what I'm talking about? Unlike Ricky Martin, who's not the least bit ambiguous. Huh? Is there any doubt about Ricky? No. Maricone Ricky? Huh? No. He is everywhere. In fact, Sam brings me in the new Miami Magazine, Miami Metro. They changed the name of it to to protect the guilty. And they're on the cover, looking like looking like he may substitute for American Airlines on your next journey. There's Ricky Mania up close with Pop Throb, Ricky Martin. It looks like it's throbbing right now. And there she is, not even not even with a toenail touching the ground making Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys look like Hercules on a good day. Anyway, getting back to these ratings, okay, and back to this. Thank you, by the way, for the pack, for the uh, packs and the facts, Peter. Gives me some good material on an otherwise very boring day. Boy, it's only the 4th of June. It is so boring here. Do you have any? Do you have any? Uh, uh-huh. Wow. There's nothing going on here. I mean, absolutely, positively nothing going on in this town. But anyway, getting back to these ratings, you see, let me explain it to you, okay? Here's how it works, folks. Arbitron up there in Beltsville, Maryland, which is all we got. I mean, that, those are the only ratings we have for radio anymore, unfortunately. They have no competition, so they can be as mediocre as they want to be. And one rating, much less one month, one rating book really doesn't mean a whole lot, unless you get lucky. But when we have the monthly trends, what happens is that every now and then, 
because they sent out a very small sample and because a lot of people don't waste their time sending the diaries back, especially if they're not an ethnic minority and they don't get, uh, you know, five bucks for the diary instead of just one, then they wind up with a really skewed sample and some stations get screwed. It's called taking a hit in the industry. Oh, we took a big hit this week. Yeah, that's what we like to say. We took a hit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm on. Right, that, not that kind of hit. That's Monday, by the way. Everybody's going to be smoking wicked weed all over this part of town. We're going to be handing out free samples. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, we took a hit. Take another hit, and another one, and another one. And then you can look at the numbers. You won't feel so bad. But at any rate, so basically what that means is that during the month of April, the diaries that they sent out, they found very few people who listened to QAM. They couldn't find our audience. Some months it happens to uh, other stations, and uh, some months it happens to all the stations. You know what I'm saying? Some stations, like uh, the light bulb, they used to happen to every month. They couldn't find their audience because there wasn't any. And the same with uh, INZ, with uh, Stupid Talk. I don't want to mention any particular day parts, but uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's had the babbling one in the afternoon. She's had kind of a bad run of luck. And just they, month after month after month since she's been on here now, which is five or six months, they keep searching and cannot find any evidence of her audience. So I think it's a pretty good, a safe thing to say when you're in this business. If month after month in the trends, you continue sucking wind and not showing any numbers at all, that is a pretty good indication that it's not just a glitch in Arbitron sampling, but not only couldn't they find your audience, but you don't have any audience. You know what I'm saying, sweetheart? If I were you, I'd go back to Jiffy Lube, get the car lubed up, and head out of town right away, okay? I'd get my diesel truck back over there right away before noon. I'd hop in it and uh, head out of town real fast before you get lower than that 1.3 share. God, just exactly what I predicted. I mean, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. Did you, Peter, huh? Did you have to be a genius? No. A maven? No. You asshole? And by the way, have a nice day, Peter. I'm sure you're listening right now. Pete Bolger and his good buddy, John Ford, they're probably joined at the hip right now. They're probably grappling with each other as we speak. Birds of a feather suck together. That's those two. Man, I'm telling you. I don't wish anything bad on anybody except those two. I'll make an exception. There's nobody else in the world I want to see anything bad happen to. Even Slavio Milosevic, he's a, he's a pretty bad guy, but he's not even in the same league with those two. Assassins. Career and life destroyers. Butchers. Liars. No talent. Ass lickers. But other than that, they're okay. Peter Bolger and John Ford, that's stupid talk. Nice to stunt, by the way, with the OJ thing. That, <laughs> that went over big. Yeah, that went over real big. Blew up in their face again. Desperate. Desperate. <laughs> so, no, we're not upset about it. At least those of us who understand how the ratings work. I mean, you're never happy when you get one of these months where they can't find a whole. But because the whole station went down to 15 to 20 percent, like those of you yesterday calling and ripping Hank a fat ass. I mean, what was that? Besides a lot of fun, you know. Oh, it was fun. I mean, why the hell not rip him an ass? He deserves it once in a while, just like I do. We all deserve to get an ass ripped. Why not? And in his case, if he would ever show up on the air at 2 o'clock, maybe we'd stop ripping him an ass, you know. Yeah, go ahead. You can play the uh, music. I'll have to find it its way down. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. WQAM Fartline. Hello. QAM. WQAM. What are they doing? This is them. These are our buddies. The fag and uh, his beer. It is? Sounds like them. All the sticks sound the same to me. Yeah, but with all their experience, wouldn't you think they'd be on here now? Or if it was ringing a long time, maybe they got tired. Yeah. QAM, Marie Corn Line. That's the guy who picked up the phone for 20 years. George. This is great. Medicone line. Hola. Yeah, okay, thank you. That was great. Oh, I love it. They're, they're like playing little grab ass with each other. That was fantastic. You're right. I am the uh, pivot man. There's no question about that. Wow. You can feel the vibrations right here in this studio. WQAM. Neil, in honor of uh, Peter's fart fetish, you ought to give him a shot of the accreditation tape. Yeah. Okay, If we one day when we have no spots, it's got to be pretty soon after these numbers sink in. Thank you, sir. Ought to be like the middle of next week, the spots all ought to disappear. By the way, getting back to our close personal friend, Todd Dreck, I don't want to start up with him again, but I will anyway. 
Yes, I do. No, seriously, here's, here's I wish the audience could have seen yesterday the scene that we had in here at about 9.30 yesterday morning. Because there's nothing simple with this guy. It's always a lot of noise, a lot of posturing, a lot of bellowing, a lot of, uh, bah, 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 you know, loud, emphatic, and obnoxious. And then, does he do what he says he's going to do? No. no. See, that's the thing. I almost cracked up in the middle of that Lorenzo spot because I just showed him yesterday that the agency faxed us over a piece of copy that is barely legible. And when there are prices in there, you want to get the information right for our close personal friend David Lorenzo and all our good paisans over there who have only been on the air with me for about 600 years. And instead of just saying, okay, I'll have somebody retype it, bop, 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 you know, and, oh, well, the fax machine, it's our fax. Okay, fine. So after going through 10 minutes of his double talk, which he does better than the late Al Kelly, uh, okay, I'm going to tell you, uh, and I said, you can't take that because it was our first spot yesterday, just like it was today. I said, you can't take that because I need that copy at uh, 10, uh, whatever. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to go right now. I'm going to have a, a nice, clean copy that uh, typed up for you. Would I? Uh, did he ever come back? No. Is there a, a change? No. I mean, what are we talking about? If you're going to scream and shout, do something, you know, besides just make a lot of noise and bluster and run around in a hall telling everybody how weird and what an asshole I am, okay? And making up stories about your good friend Peter Leonard, who never stole a freight train, by the way, and even though he's pretty uh, grisly looking, like uh, Igor on a bad day, nevertheless ain't a bad guy. We like Peter Leonard a lot. We like Fat Boy a lot. Well, yeah, we do. We like everybody except, and we love Gary Sarner, one of my newfound best friends. But in Todd Dreck's case, there will make an exception. That's where we draw the line. No, seriously, if you look a, a bullcrap artist in the dictionary, his picture is next to it. Blowhard, that's him. Ba, 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 and I mean, it just keeps getting louder and louder and louder and more obnoxious. I mean, it's, this is not rocket science, okay? It's called taking a piece of copy, having some flunky somewhere in the building, retype it on a sheet of paper so it's legible. That's not very difficult, is it? No. 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 Does it require like a big song and a dance and a seminar and him in here jumping up and down like a Jewish Rumpelstiltskin? No, it does not. No, it does not. Okay? I want to take back what I said about the nanny, by the way, being the role model for anti-Semitism around the world. Todd Dreck is the role model. Not the nanny. I mean, Jesus Christ and Joseph uh, and Saul. I mean, he's so adamant. He's so, oh, I'm going to get that done right now. And he goes barging out the door. Did we see him again? No. Have we seen him this morning? No. Has the copy been replaced? No. Is it still hard to read? Uh huh. And this is a guy, like I said, who runs around the hallway here, ba, 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 you know, talking up a storm. See, as a substitute for doing anything, just talk up a big storm, okay? Talk a good game. Don't do anything. Just talk a lot. Bluster. Remember Howdy Doody and Mr. Bluster? He could have played Mr. Bluster. In fact, if they ever make the Howdy Doody movie, I'm going to nominate him. He can be Mr. Bluster. Ba, 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 ba. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the agency guy actually turns out to be a pretty good guy. Well, everything's relative, you know. 1026 at 560 WQM. Hey, give I'm going to uh, give you the real thing here, Neil. What would you do if I had normal boobs? Would you still run out and buy my CD? Do you get long when I screech out a song? Decide how much I sing off to Kiki, I'm gonna get by with implants in my breast. I'm gonna get guys with implants in my breast. Um, I don't have to try with implants in my breast. Did you audition for anybody? I only had to pull my panties down. Are they pleased with your body? Yeah, not to mention where I put my mouth. Can you succeed by just spreading your light? Yes, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a guy. How long will you be sweet and just 17? Well, at least until I'm out of rehab at 35. I get by with implants in my breast. I get guys with implants in this in my breast. I don't have to try with implants in my breast. Have you pleased your last page, mommy? See, she lived through me vicarious, vi vicariously. Have you pleased 
Okay, 1032 at 560. You know, it's interesting that uh, number one, the album, by the way, what I tell you, Billboard is always a week behind when it comes out to the public. Number one this week, Millennium, oh. Backstreet Boys, thank God, replacing Ricky Martin. But on the singles chart, the Hot 100, you're going to be really depressed when you find out number one is still Ricky Martin living uh, uh, La Pinga uh, Loca. Huh? Licking La Pinga Loca. It's all the same. And number two is Jennifer Lopez. Like I said. Yeah. And, of course, Britney Spears is uh, popping up the old <laughs> chart, too, with her single. I'll stop you when you get to a real musician. Sure, but that's my point, and that is that we've come uh, you know, to this thing now where it doesn't make any difference whether you can sing or not as far as the uh, single charts are concerned. But if you look pretty good, if you have big boobs or like uh, shake your booty pretty good, then uh, they're running out there like crazy. Which goes to show you that uh, you guys ought to be very pleased because there's a lot of desperate women out there. I mean, horny, desperate, emotional, desperate. Yeah. I mean, and of course, the, the worst part of it is, don't they get it? I mean... No, like Ricky Martin. Uh, seriously, they could be they could be the hottest looking things in the history of the human race. And uh, is there any chance? No, no. Is there a teeny tiny? No, no. Not with Ricky Martin, who's looking La Pinga Loca. WQAM. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, so Janelle. What is it? I'm on the mobile. Okay, so Janelle. Yeah, speaking. Hey, how is it going? Let me ask you a question. How's we going? No, I didn't say that. Let me ask you one question. Yeah, ask me a question, sir. What's that? Why do you hide behind a phone? You why, old mouth. Why do I hide behind a phone? Right. Well, let, let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you something. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Do we know who you are? Yes. Who, how are you? Know you? I am. I met you behind the hockey game. I sat behind you. You what? I sat behind you in the hockey game. At what hockey game? Two months ago. And? And you're just a bald-headed side guy with a big mouth. Yeah. And, yeah. and what did you say to me at the hockey game? Did we have this discussion at the hockey game? Yes, we did. We did? No, we did not. Yes, we did. No, we did not. You had a mouth. No, we didn't have any discussion. So, in other words, you're the pussy pal, okay? You're sitting right behind me allegedly at the hockey game, which I'm sure you weren't. But if you were, we didn't have this discussion, did we? No. No, because you didn't have the balls. But you're the anonymous one behind the anonymous phone, like all the other brave callers we got out there. Always been that way. Meet these people in person. Oh, licky, 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 licky. Licky la p- a pinga loca. That's right. But then on the phone, all of a sudden, they got bat, 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 yeah. Speaking of that, by the way, here's a fax that says, to uh, Neil Ray Hank Goldberg. Boy, they're just ripping the uh, hamster a uh, uh, fat ass this week. I would rather, what is this? I'd rather crawl a mile over broken glass, stand in a wind tunnel filled with Brooke Daniels farts, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then eat maggots from Rosie O'Donnell's rectum. Butt cheeks, then listen to five minutes of Hank's show. Keep up the good work, Neil Signed Bill. How do you like that? They're hostile with a humper this week. Huh? I think there's a problem there, especially when he mentioned <laughs> Brooke Daniels' gas is in from the old Well, we shouldn't have said that because then we'll get uh, Peter upset, who's probably rushing right now to turn on the news station. I mean, just stop and think about how ludicrous that is. See, all, all these people, they want to sound very intellectual. Oh, yes. Wait, like the guy that called the other day about, well, you know, I, I, who lied through his teeth, who claims that he doesn't listen. And we know he does listen. And, uh, you know, this uh, shock radio of yours and uh, penis, uh, you know, penis this. and pe- He must have said penis 68 times. Maybe he figures if he says, says it often enough, he'll grow one, you know. Yeah, this guy before that allegedly sat behind me at the hockey game. I've never had anybody sit anywhere near me at the hockey game and open up a mouth. The only the only assholes I've had at the hockey game were Andy from Hollywood, whose facts I just threw in a wastebasket, by the way, and that Mitch guy, who always comes around thinking he's a comedian with his shub sandwiches for uh, for the spokesman. And that's it. WQAM. George. Yes. Big report: Ocean Drive, Hallandale, oh. heading northbound. Yes, sir. Three three motorcycle cops standing in the woods catching people. Yeah. Just before Hallandale Beach Boulevard, heading north out of Golden Beach. We got it. Okay. Thanks, sir. Bye. Have a great weekend. There you go. One of our reports from our astute people out there in Radio Land. Oh, I love that. I love that call we had uh, with the sounds in the background. The uh, oh, that was beautiful. Because that should give you an idea, and especially when it comes back to these ratings. Now, do you think that if that group of uh, 85 uh, misfits if they all had their Arbitron diaries, are they going to admit that they're listening? No. But they're all, we have the biggest closet audience in the history of the radio business on this show. 
I would say if you triple the numbers that we get in a good month, that, that would be a better indication of the percentage of people that are really listening in this town. Everyone is listening in this town. Make no mistake about that. Who was that guy that just opened the door and came in here by accident? Who was that? This guy was about seven feet tall. Maybe he was from, uh, although he was a white guy. I was going to say a basketball player. He was white. Maybe he was looking for the bathroom. Might have been. WQAM. Hey, hey Neil. Yes, sir. Um, no, you were talking about the singles. Uh, wait, wait a minute. The... Now, after the spot it's is Joe run Costello's again. Joe Costello's fault. Oh, yeah, okay. It must yeah. have been Joe Costello's fault. Todd, you're still a butt plug. Go ahead, sir. No, you were talking about um, the, the singers, and they're not really singers. They're just on the single charts or whatever. Crazy it's, Jew bastard. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's not like the old days when you had, like, Richard Harris singing MacArthur Park and Cher singing Gypsies, Trance, and Thieves. Yeah, and Bob, Jan and Dean singing Sidewalk Surfing. Yeah, but at least Jan and Dean were musicians. They were? Well. Jan and Dean were musicians? Weren't they? How can how come Brian Wilson had to write all their music for him? Well, okay. Jan and Dean it. were musicians? Well, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm not that right. old. You're, I think you're right. Um, but uh, And Annette Funicello, she was pretty good. What's that? And, uh, and what's his name? Uh, Frankie Avalon, he was a musician. And the monkeys. Yeah, the mother monkeys yeah. were uh, David Nace, uh, Michael Naismith. He was a musician. Michael Naismith was a musician. And true, and, but, and Peter Dork. But Davy Jones was a little, uh, child British TV star. A smelly little on. guy that wound up living in a uh, in a dump somewhere. Yeah. And Peter Tork was kind of a nerd, I guess. Mm-hmm. Neil, uh, listen, have a good weekend. And, and I'm out of you, material. Sir. God bless you, and God bless uh, Britney Spears, okay? And Jennifer Lopez and Ricky Martin, uh, licking la pinga loca and all these other great artists that we have today. And my good, close, personal buddy, Enrique. See, it's not really important whether you like Enrique's music or not, although I happen to like it a lot, especially when he sings in Italian. But Enrique is just... Just look at him. Just put your honor on his shoulder. Put your head on his shoulder and say, There you go. See how emotional he gets on this show? Yeah. Exactly, he gets very emotional. He's obsessed with me. What? Hey, listen, I'm getting a little bit rigid just thinking about the fact that Enrique's out there listening right now and may actually be uh, touching himself because he's so excited from the vibrations of my voice coming over his speaker. I'm sure that's what Sam told me. He said he's touching it. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM. If- Friday, you bastard. Oh. This is Debbie. Oh, hi, Debbie. I'm interested in getting some operations done. Okay. And some body contouring and some liposuction. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you had some tummy tuck and uh, lip augmentation, cosmetic breast surgery, face lift, all of these things. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering... What would you like to start with? Well, I, I need to get everything done. Probably the first thing I'd like to have removed is my uh, my thing. Okay, we don't do that. No. Could you do breast implants, though? Uh, it can be done, but mm-hmm. I don't know that they would do it right away. It puts the lotion in the basket. Mm-hmm. How much? Uh, 5000 Excellent. I'd like to have my skin resurfaced, too. Mm-hmm. Laser surgery. Mm-hmm. Have the lambs stopped crying yet, Mommy? Excuse me? Don't hurt Mommy's little baby. It puts the lotion in the basket. I'd like to get the liposuction that I saw on TV. Okay. Can you make me look more like a woman? Well, we'll have to see you first, and then upon looking at you, we can tell you that when we see you. Should I wear my skin suit made of body parts, Mommy? Uh, if you'd like to. It puts the lotion in the basket. Would you like to make an appointment? Yes. Okay. Um, there is a $100 consultation fee. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Um. My name is Buffalo Bill. Okay, let me get a little information from you, okay? Just one moment. It puts the lotion in the basket. I understand. It puts the lotion in the basket. Do you want to come in for a consultation? It puts the lotion in the basket. Uh, Okay. Would you like to make an appointment or do you want to call me back? It puts the lotion in the basket. I understand. I've got my skin suit nipple necklace. Bill. It puts the lotion in the basket. I understand that. Would you like to It puts the lotion in the basket. Would you like to make an appointment? It puts the lotion in the basket. 
Okay, I will talk to you another time, okay? It puts the lotion in the basket. Hello? <laughs> Damn it. 1045 at 560 WQM. By the way, speaking of that asshole that called about allegedly being behind me at the hockey game, which he was not, or if he was, he had his mouth real shut that night. But nevertheless, it just dawned on me. I'm always talking about Publix and MIA. Those are the three places. See, I'm finding more joints where I'm really big. Miami International Airport, I would say Publix of the Sawgrass, definitely number one. And the uh, Macarena with the hockey games, I'm legendary. I'm gigantic. I'm huge there. Big, like about this big. Okay, look at this. We're doing a little screenless action today, and this audience has got no material, man. You have got absolutely, positively nothing. Even on the uh, on that great, that provocative fax that we had from Peter to start the show this morning, nothing. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. No wonder Mad Dog was a psychotic yesterday. Jim Andrews will be here again for the much despised Hank Goldberg at two this afternoon. I don't know why Hank is all of a sudden much despised. I guess because he's out of town, it's an easy target, just like uh, the anonymous guy that called before on the phone, you know, with his big mouth behind the anonymity of the phone. So Mad Dog will be here between 2 and 6 this afternoon. Then we got the Talking Baseball with Donald Z. Brennan at 6 o'clock. 6.30 the pregame in the Marlins and the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Wow. Big one coming up 7 o'clock tonight. You know those red-hot Marlins that won uh, again last night? No. Any interest? WQAM. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, you know why you're not getting many calls? You got to do the gay priest talk. See, that gets everybody riled up. Uh huh. That's what it is. Is that what you want to talk about? If you want to, I know. I don't think I've ever met a straight priest either. Yeah. Uh, um, Were you ever molested is... by a priest? What's that? Did you ever go no, to confession? Have, no, no, I never have. Are you I, are you, I, ca- are you Catholic? No, I used to be till I reached the age of reason. Yeah, ten. And now I pretty well all of yeah. it. You ever notice uh, when you were in a confessional, those strange thumping sounds on the other side of the wood? Only when I told them that I touched myself. Uh-huh. That's when I started hearing those noises. Right. Um, but I, I didn't there say is, wood, did I? What? Go ahead. Uh, I knew a priest for 16 years. Yeah. And uh, it took me to when I wound up, wound up working uh, at the parish. You were working under I, him? No. <laughs> There's no, no. facts in, in the church. Yeah. No, it was well, a lot of young when aspiring I priests working to work under an him. older priest. When I started working with him, um, then I realized, you know, how strange he was. Yeah. Well, and, most, you uh, know, most guys that walk around in a dress, it's not exactly your everyday cup of tea. You know what I'm saying, Room? And they don't wear anything under that dress. Right. Okay, well, I'm so. glad you checked it out and have a great day. There's a guy who knows the insides and outsides, the father's tool. WQAM. Hey, Uncle Neil, what's going on? How you doing, sir? All right, uh, regarding the facts. Yes. Um, I got no problem. No, no problem with the far sound. Yeah. Um, the Mayanus bit you play that got real old real quick in my eyes. But okay. Well, you noticed like I didn't it. play it yesterday. Yeah. I but now that you refreshed my memory. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you so much. Um, hey, regarding Hank and. Uh, so in other words, and, you're tired of Mayanus? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Anyway, regarding yeah. Hank. And uh, people saying that they don't like. Yeah, why is the of... audience so vicious with Hank all of a sudden the last couple of days out of nowhere? No, I'm, I'm. I thought Hank had kissed and made up with the audience and was doing just great. And then all of a sudden the last couple of days they've turned on him like a rat, like a rabid uh, animal. H- Hank, Hank, and you are very similar. You, in the first place, you guys are well Fat, Jewish. Well, yeah, well, well, whatever. Well read. You're educated. You speak the truth. Yeah. A lot of people don't like you because you're not afraid to say what's the truth instead of what people want to hear. And there that's are how people who don't like me? No, I mean, you, you've, had a lot of detra- <laughs> you've had a lot of detractors over the years, true or false. Yeah. Okay? And a lot of the reason for that is not because you're potty mouth or this or that. Because they but, can't stand the truth. That's yeah, right. Like that's the it. Catholic Church that's it. And, and the born-again fanatics and the right-wing uh, gun nuts and all these other idiots. Well, wh- whatever. I mean, the thing with all Hank is things. if Hank doesn't like a certain player or a certain team or he's got an opinion on something, yeah. he comes out and says it. Now, a guy, a guy like DeForest, you don't hear that many complaints about the first team because they're a bunch of cupcakes. Yeah, wimpy. Yeah, the word you're looking for is wimpy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Defoe really lost my respect this morning when the guy, uh, when Geldy was asking about Steven got even being in a race tomorrow in the Belmont, and he's like, oh, I think uh, he dropped out. I mean, come on, it's right there in the paper this morning, Defoe. It doesn't require a direct line to the uh, Jimmy the Greek uh, grave line, okay? All it requires is, like, opening up the newspaper, doing just a little bit of homework, seeing the names of the uh, 12 horses that are in the uh, field there, and then you'd have some idea. But, I mean, you know, we don't really care anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and obviously. Thing, I mean, today was Dunkin' Donuts Day, and we appreciate the free food, and that's all we care about. You know, we, I'm trying to listen in the morning, and you, know, but you do can, listen in the morning, don't you? Come on, you listen. I, I, once in a while, until I hear that squeaky voice come on, the squeaky door. 
I mean, I'll be listening to Defoe and, and um, Joe Rose having a conversation about something. Yeah. And, and when Geldy comes in, even if he says something intelligent. Yeah, but Geldy's my hero now, though. He gave me the new outlook on life. Geldy's my main well, man. Well, that is true about that. Yeah. But that's about He's it. He's added I, years to my life. He don't realize it yet, but uh, I owe Geldy big time. In fact, I say Geldy for Pan Voice of the Panthers. Oh! You know, so I, uh, but getting back, getting back again to you and Hank, and I'll go off the air. Yeah. I, I was listening to Mandich yesterday, and I was, that's when I started thinking about Didn't how get any calls. Mandich is great, and he gets no calls. And it's, it. It, you know something? It tears my guts out. Well, Hank doesn't get any calls either. Oh, you're wrong about that. Hank gets more calls than anybody on this radio station. Not, not All he's got to do is sit down when it eventually gets to a microphone, wherever he might be, right. you know, about 20 after 2, and, uh, like, usually don't even have to give the numbers out. Well, he's always saying, well, we got, he's talking back to the guys in the studio. We got any calls? Nothing. Okay, we're at Chula's too or whatever. And he goes on from there. Yeah. Um, well, I called him up. He was talking about, like, the 50 greatest athletes that they're doing on ESPN. Right. And I, I, uh, or well, that was, whole thing is so ridiculous. Uh, you know, the, the whole thing is intended to create a lot of controversy and get everybody talking about it, and it's working very well, you know. No, but this thing, it, it, is, it is a good way to give, to give uh, homage to a guy like Lou Gehrig or Oscar Roberts and people that, that maybe haven't been active. In, yeah, but, in, but, but Mickey years. Mantle is 37 and Secretariat is 35. Right. They put a horse ahead of Mickey Mantle. Right. It's right. enough to make me tear my liver out. So he, he's talking give about give it to how, Mickey, but I think it's too late. He's talking about like you know Dan Marino was like ranked seventy fifth, and Deion Sanders is seventy third, or something yeah. like that. So I, so he's like, how can that possibly be? So I thought I put my two cents in, and he's saying there's no calls on the board. So I pick up the phone. Yeah. They've got, what about Shane Burton? How did he rate? Shane Burton, ninety nine. Ninety nine. He yeah. was. I get on the phone, and then I. Uh, they go into a five minute break, and yeah. then he goes, well, "We have Ron Frazier on the phone now." Oh, and geez. I said I My said, good friend know, Ron Fraser. We like you, Ron, but God, that UN baseball stuff is boring. Well, it's, it's not just that. All of a sudden, there's a there's a. I'd rather 10, hear about Jeff Popper. Fifteen Popovich. minute, ten fifteen minute gap where he's not taking calls. I said, Hank, bye bye. All right. In conclusion. So, in other words, you think the format sucks? We had a lot of that yesterday. People saying the format sucks and they just can't handle these eighty-five minute breaks. And the sales department's ruining the station. Well, you've what got said. what? You've got about sixteen minutes in breaks in per hour for you, correct? In this show, yes. It's a, Very good. It, it doesn't sound that much. No. I mean, maybe because you do a lot of live spots and it just blends in with the rest of your yeah. show. It doesn't sound that no, much. No, it, it, it's limited. That's according to the deal that we made here. It's limited. Believe me, if they had the choice, and I've told Screw Ann, our sales manager, and, and she knows it, if they had the choice, they'd run 50 minutes of spots because oh, yeah. they, they don't care about the programming. They honestly, they care about the ratings only that they'd like to keep them respectable, but they care about just loading it up with spots so we can afford to pay Wayne, you know, and well, John Henry. Yeah, well, when they for put that on crap, that, for those crap ball games we got. Every 20 minutes they do a sports update. If there's so no that bag game, sports stuff we got. No games going on during the day. Guys showering together and grabbing each other's butts. Pretty much. If there's no games going the on during the day. crap we got on Saturday morning. God, it's enough to make me wish for another auto racing show. Uh, yeah, I, saw, I met Kimbo at the airport. He was telling me a few stories. Neil Cox, though, I okay, and have a great day, sir. Bye -bye. God bless you. Okay, that guy said a hell of a lot. I'm not sure what he said, but he was a good guy. Although he, did, he didn't rip Hank. He said, Hank's okay, but he's got no show or something like that. Too many spots. To all spots radio, baby. That's us. Just get the spots on. I told you, you don't believe me, do you? You think I'm kidding. And by the way, for him to blame Joe Costello. I'm going to tell you, we like Joe Costello in this, uh, on this show, okay? Joe is one of our friends. He's one of the good people in this building, okay? One of the unappreciated people in this building. And for an obnoxious slime ball like Todd Dreck to finally come in here weaseling with a copy after I ripped him an ass on the ear, he said he would go take care of it yesterday. He didn't say he'd go and have Joe Costello or somebody else take care of it. He said he'd be right back with a retyped copy. And Joe called and said, Todd's full of crap. Yeah, Todd's full of crap. That's what he said. He's full of <laughs> Oh, sorry, Peter. Peter's on IOD again. Peter just flipped over to IOD again because they had another <laughs> anal uh, burst. Well, some people have a lot of anal bursts, okay? WQAM. Neil. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Okay. I just want to tell you, I listened to the dog yesterday. He was, like, unbelievable. Yeah. I never listened to the fat man because he's just turned me off so But how times. come my man don't get any calls? What's wrong with this audience? You want to know why he don't talk about gambling? He doesn't give point spreads. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe the degenerate gamblers. In addition to which, they, I, I've told you this since I started on this station. There are really no sports callers in this town. So when somebody comes on there that doesn't want to talk about gambling and point spreads, that really knows his stuff and also has a sense of humor, there are no calls because there are no sports fans in this town. It's unbelievable. Um, he was he was just on fire yesterday. I mean, I think the number one line was that uh, he went to the Dolphin Awards deal, whatever. Yeah. And he said there were a lot of plastic titties. And he would, I mean, I was, it was, <laughs> and it was unbelievable. Yeah. And some I, of the women had some like, too. Yeah. I'm sure they do, but I mean, I don't know any people I can, you know, 
say that and get away with Only it. Only Mandich would say plastic titties on the radio. That's correct. It was the best. It right. was unbelievable. They really ought to get rid of the fat man because he's, he's just bought. Oh, boy. The, the assault continues. When Hank comes back Monday, he might uh, pack up and get out of here. Okay. Okay. Have a great day. Boy, they hate Hank today. I don't, I don't know what it is. What did he do to them all of a sudden? Maybe a big blast or something. Huh? Maybe give him a bad tip on a ball game or something. It has to be something like that because it sounds like a grudge thing to me. WQAM. Hey, Nelson. Yes, sir. I've never seen an uprising against a humper like this in my life. I never even thought it was possible. Anyways, um, you were talking yesterday about the ratings, about how you guys took a took a yeah, dive George, yesterday. George says this is the Maricon caller. That this hey, is a Maricon. Oh, a Maricon. No, not at all. Okay. I sound. Like, I mean, it's it's uh he's whatever. He's emphatic. He he's, he hates you like poison. I have no idea. Did you like one? Uh, you know, steal a... I don't want to go into it. I have no idea. Okay. I mean, I, every time I call, I, I identify myself as definitely not a Maricon caller. Okay. Anyways, um, you were talking about the ratings yesterday, yes. and who beat you during the midday? Uh, let's see, 2554 persons? Well, still, I'm sure uh, men were number one, by, and men overall were number one. So well, actually, what station actually beat you guys? No, I know, but let me take a look. Let's yeah, see, cool. 10 to WLYF Life, which is Elevator Music FM. WBGG, which is just the after spill-off from Howard having a gigantic book in the morning, uh, which, you know, nobody listens to Big After he goes off. Y100, which was buying the audience, giving away a lot of money. The Coast had a 5.1. Uh, Love 94 with a 5.0. And we had a 4.8, which means between 10 and 2, we had about a 5.5. So actually, like, uh, only a big in life. Wow. Yeah. Elevator music? Yeah. Damn. Anyway. And, and you know it's totally bogus, and next month it'll change again, because uh, the month of April, Arbitron couldn't find our listeners. It, it happens to everybody. Yeah. You know, I have um, I have some some girls that work with me. They give me like little spy reports because uh, I guess on their bus ride on the way to school they listen to Y100 and the shallot they're pedaling in the mornings. Why? And um, about last week I think they had um, Pricky Martin. Yeah. And they were interviewing in the morning, and I think uh, Freddie and the chicks with pricks asked them if he uh, how he was handling this. This new thing now that everybody Handling his new thing, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh well, you know, all the women that are uh, swarming on me, I really don't pay attention because I'm caught up in the moment." All the women who are performing on him, swarming over oh, him. Oh, for swarming. Like, all the women that said. swarm over him, like he, he's really not paying attention because he's too caught up in the moment. He's and, too caught up in his boyfriends, I think, is what. Well, the that answer. that answers two questions. Number one, he has to know that he's a one-trick pony, and he's almost on the way out, like right. flashing the pan, like uh -huh. boys called the Backstreet Boys. Right. And number two, um. I mean, it's obvious. Whose you know, album is number one in the world, by the way, in almost every country in the world. But anyway, go ahead. Number two, he obviously has una pinga en la boca. Okay. All right, Neil. And have a great day. See, we're knocking this guy. This was a great caller. It was a great call. I yeah. apologize. Yeah, see, George, they all sound the same to me. I'm sorry. Up tight just because you get two million of them a day, I can't help it. That's because they're all listening. Thank God. That was a great final line, though. That was a great line. And God bless you, sir, and your uh, loca, whatever it was. Did I say three before 11 at 560 QAM? Uh -huh. Sports Radio 560 Okay, it's 11.01 at 5.60 WQM. Here he is, the uh, voice of the uh, everything, any horse race that's ever been run virtually, Dave Johnson. How are you doing, Dave? Hey, this is humiliating, though. You, I'm supposedly the expert, and you're the one who picked Charismatic. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought you, you picked Menifee. Like I said, I picked Charismatic. No, I did not. Well, you better get your shuffle your deck there. <laughs> who, who'd you pick? I don't even remember, but it wasn't Charismatic. Who the hell did I? Oh, I picked that other filly. What was the other filly? Excellent the, uh, meeting? Yeah. Oh, well, then but, I, I, but I had an excuse, though. She had a problem, and she like uh, she's still right. Here she comes at the top of the stretch right now. <laughs> no, but seriously, if I would have known. See, I'm out of the loop on this stuff. And the first in the Derby, as you know, I was in Europe, so I wasn't here. So I wasn't aware of this great story that's uh, unfolding. And for some reason, nobody seems to care. Now, I asked our good mutual friend Hank about this a few days ago, and he said that uh, Chris Antley, he saw him in the elevator after the race, and he said, uh, I looked him in the eye, and he said, he just got that look in his eye. And I said, what do you mean by that? I said, this is a tremendous human interest story that usually the media gobble this stuff up. Here's a guy that had problems with drugs and obesity and with uh, booze, and he lost all the weight, and he made an unbelievable comeback, and now he's on the verge of winning the Triple Crown. This is exactly the kind of story that thoroughbred racing and all sports need, you know, and uh, I'm not reading very much about that. Well, it's a great story, and he's really a nice guy and, and a terrific rider. I mean, he right. rode this horse very confidently. Right. I did see, though, this morning, he rang the bell at the opening of the stock exchange. Maybe he's getting a little bit of ink, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's getting some good tips on the inside that we only wish we had. Yeah. That could be it. Well, we'll talk to Hank. Maybe we could get Hank to mark our program, then. Okay. Now, let's see. The horse that Hank picked, let's see. Oh, here, right behind the excellent meeting, here he comes at the top of the stretch. <laughs> World order. 
Hank, Hank is a very good uh, handicapper. You, you know, you can't take it just on one race. Come that's on. right. That's exactly. In fact, I remember a couple of years ago in the Breeders' Crown, Breeders' Cup, when he picked every horse that he picked came in last, and he said you can't pick it only on one year, you know. <laughs> exactly. So I know who you like already. This is kind of a uh, pointless conversation. How do you know who I like? Because you already, you said, and if you change now, I'm going to be shocked, because I know you, you never change, except usually from Friday till Saturday. <laughs> well, you told me that if Silver Bullet Day would have been yeah, in the uh, Preakness, in the Preakness. Day, she would have won from here to the parking lot. You said I, I, she could have started in the parking lot. Okay, now she's into the uh, tomorrow in the Belmont, and I can't imagine that you would change your mind. I'm, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, right. I, I think I've got to. It's just I think she's an absolutely incredible animal, and uh, this is the first time that she's going to be trying the boys in the in the uh, Belmont Stakes, and she'll be a price. I mean, she's not going to be the favorite or even the second choice. So yeah, that's who I'm probably going to pick. And you know this. Bob Baffert, he, this guy, I mean, I like him, and he's like we said, he's got personality, and he did uh, utter a few words on the air there, made it a little colorful, but uh, why does he have to throw a monkey wrench in the works? We're waiting all these years for another Triple Crown winner, and Charismatic, which is, a, here's a horse that was in claiming races, and Lu, even Wayne Lucas didn't think that highly of, and you know, reading all these negative things about the horse, and nobody gave him credit after the Derby, and then the Chris Antley factor here, it's such a great story. Why does Bob Baffert have to get in here with that? Wait a minute, what, what do you think out? we should do? Just lay down and let this horse win the win the Belmont? I mean, if, you, sure. if you're going to win sure. the Triple Crown, you got to earn it. No, I don't think so. No, lay down gotta, and let him win it. Come on. got to got to earn it, and that's what uh, Charismatic, if he can do it, he deserves to be on the pedestal. I'm going to pick Charismatic, because you know me, I do this every time we have a winner in the first two legs. I always picked because I, I want to see a triple crown winner. It's great for racing. Well, I'd really deep down in my heart, I'd love to see him win too. I just uh, can't pick the favorite, but okay, we got a great matchup. You got charismatic, I got uh, silver bullet day, and, George, and down and the George, stretch they come. George picked Menifee, by the way, and of course he doesn't know that Pat Day is riding Menifee, <laughs> and uh, huh? <laughs> now what was I, I don't why, why don't we why don't we just box those three horses? I don't want, I wasn't going to mention this because the last time that you called, I, I let this go because I know you've called 80 million races in your life and only made one mistake, and everybody talks about that. And what, what was the race where Menifee won on the outside? And in the middle of the stretch, you had like a momentary, you know, like a little bobble there. Just it was a stretch. senior moment. It was, you're right. And, well, you know, I started and, and, calling the, the races uh, so long ago that uh, the, the saddle cloths were in Roman numerals. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know, it's because Pat Day is riding that horse. <laughs> that's the reason that Dave's having a little bit of problem there. Because Pat Day, I don't know, just uh, I, that's that whole, that whole ambiance with him. I just uh, don't pick Pat Day. Well, um, he's a good rider, but uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to pick somebody else. I, I got Jerry <laughs> Bailey. I got Jerry Bailey. This yeah. time. You got, and I got uh, the great Chris Antley, who's made a great comeback. And tell Hank that we don't care what he says. We're still pulling for Chris Antley. We don't care about that. In fact, he said, I said, what do you mean the look in his eyes? He said it kind of like he had the heebie-jeebies. I said, I didn't know he was Jewish. I mean, what, what was that, heebie-jeebies on Chris Antley? Good Irish there, boy, there used I said. to be a horse named Heebie-Jeebie. Was there? Yeah, maybe that's what he's talking maybe about. Maybe he's related to uh, L'Chaim or whatever that other one is. <laughs> okay, well, listen, have a great telecast, as I know you will, and uh, what can I say? I mean, well, you're, well, you're, If we have a Triple Crown winner, I'll call you. Will you? I will. I'll, I'll call you because, uh, you know, you, you will be the, the king of the handicappers of, of all time if, that's, if this happens. Okay, and I, all want, right. and I want double of my money back. All right. Okay, thanks, Dave. Take care. So you too. Okay, Dave Johnson here. Uh, let's see, what is it? I was born 100 years ago, and Dave was still calling the races back then. He's he's amazing. He's just like a machine. He just keeps going and just keeps cranking out the big bucks, cranking out the big money. So anyway, the audience is attacking Hank today. I should have mentioned that, too. Uh, he could have told Hank because he's up there with him at the Belmont. That would have certainly uh, screwed up Hank's weekend. Here's a fax, by the way, Venezuela response for our good close friend Sam in there, Sam the promotions man, whose idea of promoting all these three radio stations here is to put, like, Stuff in the background of pictures in Miami Magazine. Yeah, he, he pointed to me to a thing here in a Ricky Martin article. Way in the background, if you look closely enough, in real dark, way in the back, there's the Power 96 logo. You can't really see it except with like a magnifying glass. And that's our new promotional campaign here oh! at Beasley Broadcasting because it's cheap. Anyway, Venezuela response for Sam. It says, I heard you mention about the people abused in Venezuela. I myself was on board with my fiancé on that flight. Tell your idiot friend that uh, who was on that flight, that nobody deserved the treatment they received from Avenza Airlines that day. He himself was probably jocking on O.J. McDuffie. Well, what does that mean? He was yanking on O.J.'s jock, which was all, who was also on a flight with other Dolphin players. My friend was one of the randomly accused, along with those Miami police officers who were sleeping in the back of the plane. The lady making the accusation had never entered the back side of the airplane until we reached Caracas, Venezuela. The, she never entered the back side. She told officials to arrest the whole backside of the plane. Maybe she had an obsession with the backside. 
The official told her she had to point out the accused passenger. She said then arrest all male passengers from this section to the back. Officials told her again, please relax and point out the individuals. See, she said she couldn't remember and randomly picked out these 11 men. Had she even bothered to take off to tell the pilot we were loaded and drunk, I believe the pilot would have handled the situation a lot better. In addition, uh, airlines determined whether passengers are fit to fly. Had Avenza asked for help with the so-called drunken passengers, airport police would have stepped in. So please tell your butt-looking asshole friend not to make any comment if he doesn't have all the details. Idiotic jerk is what it says here. Stupid idiotic jerk. Is what it says from Enrique. Not Enrique Iglesias, but another Enrique whose last name we'll say for another day. Okay, thank you, Enrique. I believe you, okay? Not that I don't believe Sam, but Sam has been known to be a real bull <laughs> artist, you know? So I believe uh, our friend Enrique. Plus the fact that his name is Enrique means he can't be all that bad, okay? Especially if he looks good. Yeah, he said you're full of crap, Sam. He said you're full of crap and that you should have been the one that was in the who's go. Just that you're one of those. See, Sam's on the inside because he's I a mean, Venezuelan. He's denying everything. Meaning what? So what? What does that mean? He's denying what? Is he denying that? He's an asshole. Oh, no, he admitted to that. Nine minutes past 11 at 560 WQM. I'm having a Friday, you bastard. Free drugs. Tonight I have free drugs. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. Bus. The longest tool, the highest tool, the smallest tool. My fellow Americans, I stand before you tonight. Hard on. Growing. Hard on. Expanding. Hard on. Rising. I reach out my tool to all of you. A rock solid. Hard on. Hard on. Free drugs. Tonight I have free drugs. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. And ask that we join together in saying to the American people, take it. Yeah, I'm on. Okay, 1113 at 560 WQAM. Here's uh, two more pages of my fax paper being wasted by George Getz and the Libertarian Party in Washington. I wish that somebody, maybe we just have to send them a fax back and say, stop wasting our fax paper. We hate you people like poison, even though sometimes we agree with other, you know, forget it. Stop wasting my paper. Why doesn't the Libertarian Party move to a state where they can be uh, take over the whole state like Delaware? Some little teeny tiny place like maybe Rhode Island. And just take over the whole thing, and they can live up there and do their thing and uh, pretend that somebody cares about them. Nobody cares about them. We say, Jesse the body for president. Oh! That's what I say. There's a guy that really, there is a man. I'm going to tell you right now. There's one of the few exceptions in that professional wrestling, that pansy thing. But there's a guy. There's somebody I really admire. If you were to come up to me right now and say, who in this country do you admire today? I would tell you, Jesse the body. That's the man. He be the man. He has, uh, he knows exactly where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Right. He knows how to cut through all the bull crap and the bureaucratic horse crap and the hypocritical horse crap, all different kinds of, <laughs> oh, sorry, Peter, horse crap. Peter's an IOD now, by the way. What happened? I, I lost that fax. I, I want to save that one. Peter's facts. That was one of my all-time favorites. What the hell did I do with that? So much crap in so little time. And it's all probably hiding under all these arbitrands here. You know the ones that we had the real bad numbers yesterday? But at least one thing around here, they don't overreact. I mean, they did replace uh, several different people on the staff after the numbers came out yesterday, but they don't overreact. Corey Saban, by the way, good luck to you, Corey. He's starting on Monday in Fort Myers. He's gone. Fine Jewish young man who realizes that the sports world isn't what the real world is all about. You know, that's the one thing I missed yesterday when I had the opportunity. Although, you know, he always, I'm sure, you never want to burn your bridges too much, especially when you're going to Fort Myers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With all due respect to our listeners on the West Coast, you don't want to burn your bridges right away. But I should have asked him, uh, you know, to express his feelings, how he really feels about all the sports nerds and the sports crap, because uh, he's confided in us here that uh, he finds it detestable and grotesque and unacceptable that there's so many of you people out there that are just lifeless and so wrapped up in this meaningless sewage garbage. So now the fact that he's branching out and going to do news over there, maybe he'll become like a real news guy, you know, and talk about stuff that means something as opposed to a bunch of stupid ball games, a bunch of guys running around in tights. So, by the way, how's Shane Burton doing with those dolphins? Huh? <laughs> oh, don't, I shouldn't have said that. How you doing, Shane? <laughs> WQAM. Yeah, is this the Neil Rogers Show? Speaking. Yeah, this is a mobile from Fort Myers. All right. How you doing? Good. Let's go to Fort Myers. Hello. Hi, Neil. This is, this is Fort Myers. Uh, I've been listening to all of them rip Hank for the last uh, day or two. Yeah, what's that all about all of a sudden? They turned on him like a cornered rat. I don't know, but all I know is remember back when Jimmy Johnson was leaving and everybody was crying and moaning and groaning, and you picked up the phone and called Hank, and he had the story. No, he called us. Well, 
and everybody thought he was a hero. Right. And then after he does the Preakness and uh, the Kentucky Derby, they all call him up and tell him how wonderful That's he is. That's right. He's on he's on ABC television. He's a national celebrity, ESPN, ABC. He's bigger than a bread box, not as big as he used to be, thank God. And now all of a sudden, out of nowhere yesterday, they, the last two days, they've been ripping him a fat ass. Well, I guess none of them got the guts to tell him that when they call him, they, to call him up. When they call yeah, him that, up, that, they tell him how wonderful he that's is. That's a good point. Well, you know most of the callers are butt lickers. And then this one guy that called before, which I'm sure you must have heard, that claims that he sat behind me at the hockey game and opened up a mouth. He never opened up his mouth, but now that he's anonymous on the telephone, now he opens up a mouth. That's human nature, sir. They're all a bunch of pansies. Well, here's a vote for Hank. And all I right. Think Hank's doing a great job. You all right. too, Neil. Have God, a good day. God bless you, sir, and all our good friends, our paisans on the West Coast, and the Clemenza family and Tessio, too. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. It's easy to pick a guy on a guy when he's down, and it's also even easier to pick on a guy when he's out of town. Rhymes with down. I don't know what it's all about. I have no problem with Hank, although I wish he would be there a little closer than 2 o'clock every day would be good. I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me, but it would be better for him, you know, because I find myself as a listener when I get in the car, you know, right down there at 201, I'm in the car every day. And if the uh, sports update ends and Hank isn't there and we're hearing that music going on and on or we're hearing, uh, you know, a bunch of little kids sitting around, pop, 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 like that, yeah, I'm saying, hey, guess what? I'm popping my CD in the player there, and I'm not going to wait around for like an hour and a half to see if uh, the hump is going to show up or not. But again, that, see, that again comes back to our programming people, and of course they're too busy making up the schedules in there and giving the Beast lessons on how to do a spot. Does the Beast actually record spots? Now, why do you look at me like that? He does actually do spots? I, I don't know. Just because he looks like he that doesn't mean he might not have a employee. Good. He's a what? Also, in other he's words, he's upgraded. a paid employee, then he does uh, do spots. Anybody that's breathing that's on the payroll, they do spots. Well, just because he looks like a, a geek doesn't mean he might not have a good voice. Does he have a good voice? No. Does he do a good spot? No. Well, perfect for us then. Excellent. He'll fit right in here. <laughs> he's a good guy. And, and what's this crap with me? I, you know... I got to tell you one thing about Corey. Corey Saban's a good guy. I really mean this. Now that he's gone, I mean, yeah, if he were still here, I could say it would sound insincere. But he came in here yesterday during a break when we were all saying goodbye and wishing him good luck. And he says, you know, when you first, before you started here, everybody was all terrified that you were coming to work over on this station and giving us all a bunch of crap about what a bastard you were and about all these terrible things to expect. And then when you came over here, we found out you're a great guy, you know. And then, I, like this morning, I come in here, and right away, I'm sitting here. First of all, I got my glasses off. Okay, I'm reading something in the paper. I'm clipping a few things out. And, like, the door opens, and it was Geldy out there and the Beast. I got news for you. It could have been uh, Jack and Jill, for all I know, because without my glasses, I can't see who's there, you know? So I do notice a hand, and so I wave back, like, but kind of indifferently, because I don't know who it is. Next thing, two minutes later, Don, Donald B. Brennan is walking in here. Oh, what's the matter? You're in a bad mood today? Everybody says you're in a bad mood. I, be, I better watch the way I carry myself around here because uh, even my body language, if I like, oh, sorry, Peter, if I like fart the wrong flavor, like, oh, geez, in a bad mood today, better stay away. If you don't greet people the right way. When, when do I ever, any, every day, you know, I I'm exactly the same. Every day is the same. I'm like I'm kind of half awake. Yeah, but you need to warm up a little bit. People greet themselves a little bit more warmly here, especially uh, in the morning show. Yeah, because they've been up for hours already. I'm I'm just uh, getting the cobwebs out of my head. You got to do more than just uh, nod. You know, you got to like hug and squeeze. Mondays and Thursdays, I'll do that. Thing. Okay. Yeah. At least once. Let's get serious already. Well, yeah, you people are so. I, you're right. They're very uptight around here. Like if you don't. And the and, and the interesting part of it is, talk about hypocritical. We got a whole bunch of people. Usually, it's the Power 96 folks who don't even speak to us. Who won't even look at us because we're like AM people. We're not good enough for them. Bunch of little punks. Bunch of little sour punks, okay, who can suck my fat ass. God. But uh, they're very sensitive. You know, and of course they hear a lot of stuff, and then they all run out and buy a can of Lysol before I came here. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. We're doing a little screenless today, which so far has been sensational, especially that one caller that you wanted to blow off, which I'm embarrassed for you. That was the best call of the century. It was great. And he said that Ricky Martin is licking La Pinga Loca, something like that. WQAM. Hi. Yes, sir. Neil, Neil Rogers, hockey god. Speaking. This is, this is the puck head with the deep cup. I haven't called you since the 96 playoffs. I need help. You have the deep what? Rectum. The deep cup. Yeah. Okay. How do we get the name Stu Barnes on that cup? Think there's any possible way? 
No. No. How about Forsberg breaks Noondike's legs and gets suspended for 10 games? That might do it. Okay. On Hank. The, the problem is... Don't get on Hank. Oh, please. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. Come on. Let's Don't lighten up a little bit. You're, you sound morbid. You sound suicidal. You must okay, know that go. Colorado or Dallas will sweep Buffalo in four. But anyway. Okay. Oh, too much hockey. There you go again. Sorry. It's from seeing Hank on TV, I think, and hearing the story of him dating Miss Indiana. Even if I hear it 28 times, I'm not going to believe it. The man, I'm sorry, but he looks like a frog that's been run over, bloated with glasses. And that's incredible to me. Incredible. Yeah. The, just just imagining him in any kind of position is is very Well let, let me ask you this. Could you imagine your parents in any kind of position? No, but no. they don't tell me stories about Miss Indiana. Oh. Well that's a good point. Maybe and they maybe they did miss Indiana. You better you better go ask him, okay, pal, let us know the answer. Maybe his parents were had like a little menage a, a quattro with uh Hank and Miss Indiana. Five six seven. I mean they're this business of not being able to envision. Everybody I know, nobody could possibly ever envision their parents having sex, even once. Even once. The, the thought of it, just like that peeping through the keyhole thing. You know, it's a cute bit, but, but the concept there is so gruesome and grotesque. And most people, you see, when I was small, now maybe I'm not the only person who ever thought this. I, I used to think, when I first discovered what sex was all about, I used to think that sex was for me and people who look good. You follow what I'm saying? Ugly people, certainly, because sex was too exciting and too uh, whatever. It felt too good. It had to be only for me and for people to look good, which I didn't look really all that good, but I know I could do it. So it must be maybe I'm the exception, and people who were good-looking could have sex. Ugly people, of course, it was uh, what? No, not for them. Gee, isn't that interesting? I, well, I on that. <laughs> that must have been a Freudian slip on the chair. See, if she would have been wearing a Freudian slip, maybe the chair wouldn't have been so soiled. But at any rate. See, I'm not the only person who ever thought that. I mean, most people, can you actually envision, like uh, Luciano Pavarotti, can you imagine him mounting uh, Mount Everest? Anything. No. Ricky Martin, can you imagine him down there on the uh, bottom? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. WQAM. I'm with you. How are you doing today? Pretty good, sir. I got a Mike Harvey spy report. Who? Mike who? Mike Harvey. Mike Harvey? Yes. Who is? Who is? Who is Ricky Martin? Who is Mike Harvey? Who is Ricky Martin? Some uh, spick. <laughs> All right. I'll do it up with you. Did you get that? Okay. Who's Ricky Martin? You better get with it, sir. Ricky Martin is bigger than God, Jesus, Moses, and Charlton Heston put all together. Oh! She's a gigantic. She's mammoth. She's bigger than the goddamn Titanic. She's bigger than Leo DiCaprio's. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's uh, uh, it's here somewhere WQAM. Hello. Good morning, Neil. How are you today? Great. Uh, my name is Michael. Just moved. Uh, down not Michael Patty. Harvey by any chance? No, no, not. Oh, okay. Any. Just moved here about a year ago to Florida and uh, love your show. Of I just want to. I wanted to ask a, a serious question. Go right ahead. Uh, those three boys who were captured in uh, the soldiers in Yugoslavia. Right. They were tortured, beaten, and then they were sent home after Jesse Jackson did his magic. Yes. Are they, are they done with the Army now? Because you don't hear, or do they have to go back and serve? I mean, you go into the Army, it's not like you get captured, as now you're done? Uh, I, I really don't know what happened. I know they came back and they had ticker tape parades and they're giving them a period of time to, like, readjust their lives. I don't, I don't know what. Somebody can call and tell us. I don't know. I'd like to know the answer to that. I mean, I mean they should go. I mean, what happened to them is terrible, but... It's not like you get a, a magic uh, eraser that they can get out. Right. All right, that's all I wanted to know. Somebody, somebody, somebody will know. Great. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Neil. Somebody buddy. will know the answer. See, I'm not one of those people that make stuff up and I don't know, which most, most things I don't know, which is why I fit in well in this town, because generally speaking, no matter what you ask in this town, the answer is... I don't know. Right. So it fits in perfectly. By the way, guess I got out of Vegas just in time. Shooting in Las Vegas supermarket kills four... <laughs> I guess uh, four people took a bullet for Christ in the uh, supermarket in Las Vegas from this ex-Marine, speaking of the military, by the way. Zane Floyd, 23, who was honorably discharged from the Marines at Camp Pendleton, California last July and worked part-time as a bouncer at a bar, was arrested for investigation of murder, walked into a supermarket, and just very casually and calmly, right at uh, point-blank range, killed four employees and critically wounded one other one. They took the uh, big one for Christ. 
as the American obsession with uh, shooting up everybody else just continues. It's just part of the American effing way, and that's just the way it is, okay? If you don't like it, then you're going to have to find a civilized country to live in, which this is not. 26 after 11 at 560 WQM. It's God, God Almighty! What a, what a humongous piece. Wow! See, I want to uh, I want to change course on this too. I was thinking about this the other day. The Star Wars business. If you like it, more power to you. Who cares? You know. I mean, yes, there was a lot of hype, but the people, if they can make the hype, they do the hype because that's how they make all that money. If you like it, if you were entertained by it, if you enjoyed it, who cares? Great. Why does everybody have to get all so bad out of shape about? It's like music, you know. Like George is always bitching me out because uh, he thinks I have bad taste in music. I don't really care. I have no interest. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. You can think my taste is the worst in the world. I know something. I'm still going to listen to what I like, whether you like it or not. Show me the meaning of being lonely. See, you can tell me for all the money in the world that that's a mediocre song, and I'm going to tell you it's going to be the biggest song of the year. That'll be the next single from that album. It'll be number one half. And you mark my words, just like I told you over a year ago, that they'd be around bigger than ever a year from now. And here, sure enough, here they are with the number one album in the world. Whether, They're in great whether company. You, whether you like them or not, that's not the point. The point is, whatever you like, you like it. If you like vanilla ice cream, just because I say it sucks, you're not going to stop eating vanilla ice cream unless you're a, a lemming. Unless you, I mean, you can have a, a different point of view, but if you like Star Wars and you thought it was great, great. What do you care what anybody else said? What the critics say? I never go to see a movie because the critics said it was great or bad or indifferent. What do I care? I mean, you ever take a look at that Gene Shalit? I thought him and Avery Shriver were the same the person. The same person, right. Hiding behind a big uh, mustache that went out with Jerry Colonna 50 years ago, you know? Who cares what they have to say? Now, Gene Siskel, him I did like, but of course he's dead, so I can't count on him anymore, you know? He's dead. Goddamn uh, Ebert, Roger Ebert, he's still alive, damn it. Not that I wish him any ill, but like I said at the time, if one of them had to die and we took a poll on it, I think almost everybody would have said it would have been that fat uh, Ebert guy, you know? That bitch. But unfortunately, but again, God, you know, he works in mysterious ways. Yeah, we got to, uh, we can't uh, question God because we have to take a uh, crap for Christ or something like that. I still think that's a good idea. You know, for example, if you're in a crowded elevator and you like, you know, one seeps out and then everybody knows that it's you, just say, hey, I just cut one for Christ, you know. Cut one for the Lord. Oh, sorry, Peter. Oh, Peter's on IOD again. He's on National Pubic Radio listening to Pseudo Intellectual Radio. Peter, the head, that great facts. Thank you, Peter. I'll keep those things in mind all the rest of my life. WQAN. How you doing? Great. Good. I just wanted to uh, make my personal comment on uh, Hank Bashan, because you know as well as I do, Neil, that these butt suckers are going to get on Hank's show and they're going to talk. Oh, Hank, you're the greatest show in the world, and uh... not only that, they're going to call him up on Monday and say, "Oh boy, Neil, we're sure ripping you." I haven't ripped Hank at all. The callers are the ones that are. Uh... All I did yesterday was say the ratings were in the crapper, and of course, not... I... why? Why are you getting defensive, Neil? I never said you did. I understand that. I'm just telling you what they're going to say. Well, but doesn't that steam your clams that people do that? I mean, they come on this show and they talk a load of you know crap. Thank you. Yes. And. Hank's a, Hank, okay, Hank is not exactly the most interesting person all the time, but the guy is a knowledgeable guy, right. a sports show, right. and that's what the format is. And if you don't like it, turn the damn dial. Right. Jeez Louise. Exactly. I, just, I mean, it really does, because I like Hank, and I'm not saying I agree with him all the time, but I'm not going to say... Hey, stupid! 
I'm actually here for two hours bashing the dude. Yeah. Come on, man. I don't know. Where this, I don't know where this came from. It sounds like a setup to me. It's, you know what it is? It's probably all of the all ten of the Brooke Daniels people calling in, hoping that we'll blow him off the air. So maybe she'll have a little easier ride. You know, maybe she can get up to a one four, but I doubt it. And and you're also right about. You know, like George's music, I hate to tell him, is is all right, but it's not that great. <laughs> Flock, yeah. of, Flock of Seagulls is not exactly on the top ten list. Yeah, of Croc, 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 Flock of Seagulls. Yeah, you do. He does. Crock he crap, all that would. 80s garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, that was the which, 80s which, show. Uh, well, George, come on. I mean, how long has that been on Oh, no, no, wait a minute. He had a you music. you got songs like America that are still playing and are still making music. I love America. Covers. I did one yeah. 80s show, and you think that's my music? Mm, yeah. Go go back and listen to the Backstreet Boys. Come on, Neil. George, George. I mean, I'm just talking the truth, okay? I'm not just talking bashing. More power to you. But don't bash. Don't bash the. I don't like Neil's music. But he has the right to listen to it. I didn't say he didn't have the right to listen to it. He's got crappy taste, and he knows it. No, I don't. Not I have crappy great taste. taste. That that group is selling millions of albums. I mean, exactly. Uh, no accounting for taste in the world. How many is garbage selling? Oh yeah, he's in the garbage. Garbage is great. Come on, man. Okay, pal. Thank you very have much. Day. Day. I think I, I think gar I think garbage summed it up well. <laughs> and have a great day. Yeah, you like garbage. I mean, you know, it's yes, just like If you like garbage, more power to you. And Shirley yeah. Manson's hot. Oh, yeah. And Marilyn Manson's real hot. Just ask those two kids in, uh, oh, they're not around anymore. For the broken heart, to breathe in a crimson love, so hard to believe. Walk with me and me. But anyway. See, you can argue about things like that. It's like arguing about ice cream flavors. And by the way, thank God, too. I had a perfect Atkins day yesterday, oh! one day in a row. And so far this morning, uh, and thanks to my good friends at Dunkin' Donuts, by the way. At least those guys got a sense of humor. Although when they see me, they're terrified. What, what is wrong with those guys? It's not just them. No, no, but them more. I have never in my life. And they're not used to you yet. They're I mean, getting acclimated. Donald B. Brennan tries to lighten them up. Every time I walk by them in a the hall, every Friday morning, he you know, comes up with some funny line, and I always give him a funny response. But these two guys sit there, and they're like, they're like they're terrified, like uh, Godzilla just walked down the hall. Just because I said last week that you made me a thing that was ten times too big with too much grease, and I sat here with uh, uh, heartburn all day, dying from it. Now, this morning I had something that was a lot smaller, and it was delicious. It was great. So thanks to our good friends from Dunkin' Donuts. But, I mean, Jesus, lighten up a little bit, okay? Man, I'm serious. What is everybody so terrified of? Thank God we got some people around here that aren't so terrified that come waltzing in there and sit right down and park themselves right in there every day, like every Monday and Thursday, right? Thank God for them. Of course, those phone calls that they make, those outgoing, you know, to try to prove a point. We already we believe it already, okay? We're convinced. 20, uh, you ever hear the term, um, I don't want to say it, pussy whipped? 22 before noon at 560 WQM. If you Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bowen, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority, yes. Neil God. Tonight, it's cops in Pennsylvania Dutch country. I'm a cop, I'm a cop. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when the carriage comes for you? Well, hello there, Jebediah. Hello, Officer Hezekiah. Say, uh... What brings you up to my humble abode? Well, we got us some reports of some fussing and abusing in these here parts. Ah, yes, Hezekiah. I'm ashamed to admit that uh, my wife, Sarah, exposed part of her ankle. Why, that no good hussy. Yep. I've got me a good mind to put her in the stocks and give her 40 lashes. Hmm. Well, that would be a good idea, but then there wouldn't be anyone to milk the cow. Yep. Women. They're the reason we're all going to hell. Uh, yep. Well, I gotta get back to plowing the fields. Okay, then. I guess I'll be getting back to the barn raising, Hezekiah. Amish cop, Amish cop. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they shackle you? That's tonight on Cops in Pennsylvania Dutch Country. Okay, 17 till uh, noon at 560 WQM. That's interesting. You look back at last uh, spring, that's what I want to look at. Yeah, look at that. We dropped from a 6.2 in the first in the winter book to a 5.2. In the uh, second book, 10 to 3, we had a 4.8 in the first trend. So it goes to show it happens every year. April, Arbitron for some whatever reason. I think their sampling methods are they go back to the same people every book. So the fall and the winter, they get back to our audience. And then the uh, summer and the spring, it's like, they all, oh, sorry, Peter. Peter's listening to uh, WNBR, NPR, whatever that is, PR now. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. He wants to hear very important discussions of critical world matters, so we can solve them here on the radio. Like what's wrong with the human effing race? I mean, you know, it's fun to debate about movies and about books and about things like that and about music and who likes this. But I mean, people get downright hostile and start screaming and yelling. You get psychotic about it. If you liked it, great. Spend your five or six bucks. Go out and see it. Have a good time. And who cares? Keeps you off the street. WQAM. WQAM, hello. Hey, I want to talk to Neil. Speaking. Hey, Neil, how's it going today? All right. Listen to me, uh, George is an a-hole. Why is that? Okay, thanks. Well, I guess it's just a quick point. He said... He's an asshole. And that was it. Not any particular reasons to back it up. 5670560 uh, and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. How come mandates don't get any calls, by the way? I feel so bad about that because he's such a genius. Yes. He's such a comic. He's such a wacko. He's such a maniac. He's such a one in a billion. And he comes on his station. And I know he denies it, but I hear him pumping those numbers. Yet, what was the line he kept using yesterday? We've got some room in the at the inn here, you know. And he was pumping the numbers frantically and furiously. Even Kathy Willis has never been pumped that fast or that furiously. And uh, it wasn't working too well. But then again, that's the sports crowd here on uh, QAM. Unless you're talking about uh, who do you like in that uh, Vassar Wichita State, uh, you know who do you like? Unless it's uh, either that or it's a very young Florida Gator team. As long as I live, I'll never forget that call. This was an adult, a guy older, you know, old enough to know better. Serious. He was very serious about this. Like this was something important. WQAM. Yeah, George is an a-hole. Okay, thanks. WQAM. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Did you by any chance get to This sounds season? chronic. Who's this? This is one of the chronics. Could be. Yeah. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. No chronics, screenless or not. Okay. In fact, that makes it even better. Saves you having to wait on hold for a long time because believe me, you'll be just like our good friend Andy from Hollywood. One of our first one or two calls this morning. Who was on there for what? About a half a uh, <laughs> second. Yeah. And then sends me a stupid, insipid fax. Guess what? We still hate you like poison. And when I say we, I mean the whole world, okay, Andy? Don't take it personally unless you want to. That was probably one of his boyfriends, the one who called it, said, uh, you know, he was sitting behind me at the hockey game. Because all the people that I meet at the hockey game happen to be uh, pretty nice people, generally speaking, except for Mitch and Andy. WQAM. Let's keep ripping Hank, Neil. I'll tell you what I don't like about Hank. Go ahead. You can say whatever you want, pal. I opened this up yesterday to find out what the uh, people like, what what they hate, what they despise. He's not. I mean, you don't have to be uh, perfectly knowledgeable on every sport, but if somebody calls up and debates him or has a contrary opinion to his, he talks down to him. And I really don't care about it. You do listen to him, though, don't you? You do listen. Well, you know what? It's kind of like by default because I'm not going to listen to the babbling brook. Yeah. But I will say this. He talks down, you know, if you say something, he'll talk down to you. And I, I really don't care about when his father wrote sports, you know, 1910. Who, who cares? Yeah. I mean, it's like bringing up stories. As far as uh, Mandich goes, I hate to say it, but nobody cares about what the Dolphins rookies are doing in their underwear out there in, in, the, in the rain. And these people call, well, how do the rookies look? I, mean, it, I, I, I think we do have people in this audience who do care about well, they what care. the rookies yeah, but, are doing in their underwear, yeah. It's kind of pathetic. I mean, it not have anything to do with football, but... They call themselves the sports station, but it's only one sport. Yeah, but, but so in other words, you're blaming the the, the host for that? How about the audience? I mean, the, well, these guys... Oh, it is the audience, because that's all the people down here know how to talk about. They don't know anything about sports. This isn't a sports town. That's why I'm telling you, it's a miracle that this station gets any numbers at any time, well, because there are no sports fans you down are, here. You're the main magnet for the ratings. The main magnet, right. Mag- magnet. Right. But, you know, the way it is is... You're, if, just the, look when, when you weren't there. They had that fat sports slob yeah. who couldn't draw. They owed lines. points in midday. They, they owed the minus points. column. That's correct. And they, they had, had no money coming in. And they had that scrawny uh, moron, the uh, hockey moron on yeah, there in midday. Which, you know, he couldn't tell. I mean, you can't talk about the Marlins because it's so pathetic. Who cares? But there's, there's no interest. I, I mean, mean, absolutely not. I mean, scanning around last night, I happened to just look at the game. Yeah. You know, for like a blink. Just like. There's like 15 people in there. Why don't even bother open up the uh, stadium for? No, I I don't know. I I saw about a half an inning last night just by default because there was nothing on. And uh, to me, to be honest with you, it said 15,000 in the paper this morning. I actually thought there were more than that. I, I guess I'm used to seeing a completely empty stadium. Well, maybe there was no school today, so that's why. It, they... it showed like a concentrated area where there actually were a few people well, sitting around. I think what they do is they get they borrow the cardboard from uh, Alex Bennett show. The fake people in the audience. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Okay. I think I saw Alex there. Okay. Have a great day. I'm on my way to Toronto. All right. See ya. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Oh, that guy's going to Toronto. Probably see him on Church Street. So what? What were you just saying? There is no school today. Yes, there is. No. Well, how come then the uh, lights were flashing? How come we had a slowdown on uh, Ives Dairy Road then? Sorry, their mistake. Really? Or maybe it's in Dade County. Uh, there, there's school. There not is, in Broward. I think there is in Dade, but not in Broward. I know there's no school in Broward. But at any rate, speaking of that that school zone, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I realize this is personal, but I'm sure there are other people out there who have the same experience. I'm not a goody two shoes. I don't drive real, real fast, even though I got a car that'll go real fast. I don't drive real slow. That's for damn sure. But I'm one of those people who, when I come to a school zone, just out of common sense, not only not wanting to get a ticket, but just out of common sense that there's a reason to slow down there. And especially if it's not a school zone that goes on for like seven blocks. Some of them are ridiculous. But the one there on Ives Dairy Road is a short school zone. As soon as you go under that bridge there, under the overpass or over the underpass or whatever that thing is, coming from the stadium, uh, there's the thing that says school and a road, and you slow down to 15, and it's like for a block and a half. It's not a big deal. And every morning of my life, I come to work, and I get to where in the road it says school zone, where it officially starts, and I hit the brakes, and I slow down to 15 miles an hour, and some asshole behind me goes zooming around me to the right like they're in a big-ass hurry, and I'm thinking, you mother-scratching idiot. And then, of course, they get about another, you know, few yards ahead, and all of a sudden they look, oh, like everybody else is going 15, and they have to slow down, too. But some of them are even so obnoxious, they're like weaving in and out, like maybe like 25. 15 don't mean 25, okay? You idiots. God. Just unbelievable. And thank God that the porkers out there are doing a really great job, not, not. Never, ever see the people who are doing the most aberrant things, like that guy on 836 the other day coming back from the airport. Nearly killed this poor bastard, driving on the shoulder in a lane that didn't exist, hauling ass on the shoulder, and bumping this poor guy, and then, like, flying all over the middle of the road, and then, like, uh, just a miracle that ten people didn't get killed, including me. Nice going, jackass. Get back on your banana boat with your 85 relatives there and get out of here and let us live. God. WQAM. Hi, I want to talk to Neil. Speaking. Hey, Neil, how's it going? Great. Listen, I love it when you uh, announce that you're going on vacation because it uh, saves me the uh, the frustration of having to listen to George on the radio. Okay, thanks. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, um, same thing happens to me. There's a school zone by my house that's from 7 to 8 in the morning and 4 to 4.30 in the afternoon. So around 4 o'clock, 4.15, I hear I come up to, this, to the school zone. It's on Cass Street. Uh... And the person behind me, I mean, it, it never fails, just like you, every day. And they're waving their arms, and then when they pass you, they look at you like you've done something wrong. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, those they're are my favorite. They're looking at you like, like, you asshole, what did you slow down for? Yeah, no, I do the opposite. I always give them a dirty look, like, what is wrong with you, you aberrant, well, law-breaking I, piece of turd with no you know, brains in your head? I'd like to get up to them. I can't catch you because they're going so damn fast. Yeah. And say, hey, look, you know, I hope your kid wasn't coming out across the street there. You know? Right. Yeah, man. And when you had mentioned about the guy going through the light the other day, that you were fumbling for something. Right. And and your pen, too. Right. Um, that uh, that happened to me, too. Like, the next day, I was sitting in a light, and I drive a tractor trailer, and you praise people like me, you know, out here on the road. You know, you should ride with me one day. And uh, I was getting ready to put in gear and shift gears, man. And two seconds, this beat-up truck with the bumper hanging down just flying right through. It's unbelievable the way these people drive. And I've been out here 37 years, and I've been driving a tractor trailer for the last 10, and it's like these roads are unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know where they come from. I don't. You know, it's like, you know, they said they pass that law with the inspections. I don't know if that's gone through yet because i got to go get my car inspected. Uh, but they should bring back the regular inspection. Right, exactly. Like they used to have here. God because forbid like, we do that. That would make too much sense. Oh, okay, yeah, have a great day, pal. Your phone is uh, blowing up on you. And, you know, everybody's all been out of shape, of course, because of this uh, American Airlines crash, this uh, accident they had in Little Rock, and nine people getting killed and uh, several other people getting injured. But, but, and I'm not that, uh, like I told you the other day when I came back from Vegas, I flew MD-80s from Vegas to Dallas and Dallas to here, and I hate those planes. Hate them. But I feel a hell of a lot safer every time I get in a plane than I do in my car. That, not even close, not even a contest. I'd rather be in a commercial uh, jet any day of the week flying to anywhere than driving on the roads of this town. No contest. 
because there are a lot of crazy people out there, and they're like uh, they're stoned, they're uh, they're clueless, they're uh, stupid, they're all of the above, and uh, they're driving. That's Florida for you, baby. They're driving. They're 100 years old. They're uh, peering over the steering wheel. They're blind. They're deaf. They're dumb. They're driving. And the reason that it happens is because, like everything else in the state, nobody cares. You know that It's kind of like QAM. We're kind of like the epitome of the state of Florida. Nobody gives a crap. So whatever goes down, that's what happens, and, uh, and that's it. You know. And then everybody wrings their hands and talks a lot. We're going to do this. We're going to do that, which they never do, and it just continues to go on. And it continues writing speeding tickets on hiatus road, et cetera. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. And by the way, speaking of Hiatus Road, if you cops out there in plantation want to do all my good friends out there want to do something constructive, how about sitting a little bit closer off the side of the road to the intersection of Sunrise and Hiatus on the south side of it there, and nailing those bastards who keep running the light and endangering all of our lives. I'll tell you one thing. Here's my advice to anybody that travels in that area: you better count to one and a two. Do a little Lawrence Welk when you get to that stoplight, okay? When it turns green for you. One and a two and a three, and look both ways before you even think about hitting the gas. Because that is Suicide Alley, that intersection right there. And they just come running a minute. I never even would dream of going through there unless I've looked both ways and make sure that these assholes have stopped. They figure, if, you know, if the light's red, but they're like uh, 50 yards away, it gives them a good running start to beat the light, even though it's been red for two seconds. Murderers. That's what you are. You're a bunch of murderers. WQAM. Please. Speaking. Neil. Yes, sir. I got a theory. Everybody down here thinks they're a NASCAR. You ever drive a 95? They don't just pass you, right? They come right up on your bumper, and they go right around you like they're maniacs. Yeah. And the people, these kids nowadays, think they're cool. They sit in these cars, the seats all the way back, the back seat. They might as well take the front seat out and sit in the back seat. Right. Unbelievable. It drives me crazy. Hey, listen, I'm coming home from the track the other night on Wednesday night, and I get, you know, I'm coming to, uh, west on Sunrise, and there's uh, a couple of kids, teenagers, in a car next to me in a, uh, a Toyota Celica or something like that, you know, some marginal car. And we get to the stoplight, and, of course, uh, being in my 99 vet, I take off, and I'm 50 yards up the road ahead of them. So now, and I'm going 52, 53 on Sunrise, which is a little more than the speed limit, but not right. crazy. They come rolling up behind me and go flying by. They're going like 90 to prove how hot they're. And they're in a Celica, for crying out loud. What do they have to prove to me? I can go 92, and they're like flying. Up. So we get to the next light, and again, the light turns red. I take off. I'm 50 yards, and they pull the same crap again. And I'll tell you, I bet they're trucks am, rattling from their speakers, right? I am so <laughs> impressed. I can't begin to tell you how impressed I am. I, you know? These people are jerks, man. It's driving me crazy. Thanks a lot. Good luck, pal. You'll need it. Assholes behind the wheel of cars. That's our topic this year. This century, assholes and cars. And speaking of assholes, by the way, I don't want to tell you it's warm in here, but I'm spitzing up a storm. That's how warm it is in here. I'm going to take a look myself. That must be me. 73.5. It's uh, beautiful in here. Yeah, it's like okay it. in here. It's what? It's okay in here. Yeah, it's okay. It's just, it must be me. I'm, what is it? Oh, I think I'm going to have to go home. Four minutes before noon at 560 WQAM. You know, <laughs> O.J. got away with murdering his woman and her white and Jewish friend. Oi! Now we hear him say he's thinking about moving to Miami where he thinks he'll blend in. Go back! Go back! Go back to hell where you belong! Go back! Go back! Go back to hell where you belong! Go back, OJ! We'll be going to a next door on Stupid Talk Radio. Yeah, get off the air, you murdering asshole! Ooh, what'd you say to me, you wife? I killed your ass! I've been stabbing your white ass! It wouldn't be the first time I got away with it! Go I'd like to thank everybody for welcoming me to that neighborhood. Okay. It's uh, 12.02 at 560 WKM. We got Mad Dog Mandy yeah. for Hank 2 to 6 this afternoon. I sure hope he gets some calls, you know. 
I mean, this guy before that was ripping Mandich. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I realize it's more fun. Rip everybody, me included, whoever you want. That's more fun than ass kissing, at least to me. I don't like ass kissing. It's boring. But ripping Mad Dog Mandich, I mean, let's get serious. That's like ripping uh, the Lord. That's like ripping uh, Jesus and Moses and uh, Madeline O'Hara. Although she ain't doing too good. Here's a fact that says, with all due respect to Hank, the only problem I have with him is that he's conceited at times. I'm not going to get it. How about the name dropping? Does that bother anybody? Uh-huh. I love Hank, but, I mean, the name dropping I could live without. You know, like I was having breakfast with Ron Fraser this morning. But, you know, I know Ron Fraser, and uh, I've had many meals with Ron Fraser over the years, although it's long ago, back in my U of M Hurricane baseball days. But uh, I don't run around saying, you know, back in Omaha, Ron Fraser and I were having dinner one night, and Skip Bertman was sitting at the end of the table, and he said, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? That I do find a little bit uh, put-offing. Is there such a word as off-putting? Anyway, it says, I'm not going to give any examples because I don't want to add to the bashing, especially when he's out of town. Hank is very knowledgeable and insightful, and I particularly enjoy his discussions during football season. Recently, I've been tuning to Power 96 at the conclusion of your show. Now, now what, what does that mean? Oh, well, it's not football season. In addition, Neil, I know you're not very fond of cruise ships. Uh, no. No. But in two weeks, I'll sail to the Caribbean. I, too, will lose money at the casino, but it's once a year, so why not? Finally, George is not an asshole. He's pleasant to listen to while you're gone. Have a great weekend, Mike. There you go. Nice going, Mike. Good facts. He's kissing everybody. Although I, it's a little peculiar. Hank is very intelligent and insightful, but at 2 o'clock he turns to Power 96. Oi! Well, we like that. For the broken heart. Yeah, they like that over at Power 96. My best close personal friend, Kid Curry, who said, by the way, that Anna Squeak did have a big ass and also said that Enrique Iglesias loves me like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, he said somebody brought up Howard's uh, name. Into the, did he tell you that part of it? And yes, Enrique got incensed and got up and he just punched out on the ground. lights out and spat in his puss and said, are you crazy? Howard couldn't lick Neil's uh, rectum. Right. Had a boy, Enrique. Got to stand up for your man, sweetheart. I'll see you about 730. You know, how come I never get to meet any of these people, you know? Always, they're always big fans from a distance. They always keep their distance. Well, if your mom wouldn't keep screwing up the deals that they try to... Oh, uh, if you it's know. not for hockey, he's not interested, Slam. Yeah. That the worst that's the worst thing in my life, you know. I mean, I appreciate my mother comes and takes care of the dogs when we're away on vacation. That's very nice. It's wonderful. I don't know what I would do without her, but but she makes decisions, you know, like uh, she, like that are not hers to make. First, she kills your dog, then well, she that, kills that your was, chances uh, the old one. Yeah, I, I'm sure that one of these days we'll come back from vacation and we'll say, ah, oh, you know, the dogs weren't looking too good. I had my dogs put to sleep. What do you mean your dog? Well, you know, yeah, they weren't looking too good. They were kind of a pain in the ass, and so uh, you know. They're sleeping with the fishes now. But your house, you notice how clean the house is? You see that nice plant in the other room? Your dogs I had to put to sleep, but how do you like the way I, uh, uh, you know, ironed your shirts? Stuff like that. You don't know what's going on in your house. Because that's right. I don't know what's going on in my house. But the thing with Enrique's secretary calling my house to personally invite me to his concert, and Enrique is sitting right there next to the secretary, and my mother says, oh, I don't know what this is about, but if it's not about a hockey, he's not interested, and she slams the phone down. Is that incredible? WQAM. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? Great. Last night I was skipping through the channels. I happened to run into Channel 7, which I never watched. Oi! Yeah. Rick the Porker Sanchez was sitting there talking about how they have the exclusive on the homes that OJ is looking at in Miami. Oh, great. You know, it makes me sick, man. They still give this asshole so much attention. Mm -hmm. They have nothing better to do on Channel 7 than go through every house that he's been looking at. He's an asshole. Okay, thanks for the good news, sir. Yeah, exploiting the uh, hysterical, that's what the media does. That's all they do, including CNN and Fox News Network and MSNBC especially. That's all they do is take and exploit and exploit. They're loving it. Every time there's a mass murder, they just, uh, they're just they crawling from it. They're rubbing their hands together from it. And then they go on there and they dutifully put on that big act like, oh, this was so horrible, and they're indignant and outraged. They're loving it. They're squeezing it. WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, O.J., did you hear on the O.J. move? O.J. what? O.J. Simpson. Did I hear what? Considering to move to Coconut Grove. No. Yes, got kicked out of Winston Hill, I believe the name of it was. Uh huh. They didn't let him in. Yeah. He's a mighty call. Okay, thanks. He's considering moving to the Grove. That's a bulletin, isn't it? No. No, we had that on, what, about 10 weeks ago? It is getting warm in here. It's not just me. It's, it's just clammy in here. It's clammy. It is. It's not comfortable in here. I don't want to start complaining too much, but I will anyway, even though Greg Reed, his wife, hates me like poison. That was a very, I learned a lot here yesterday. That was good. 
I'm glad that that Julio guy, my good uh, amigo out there, called him and gave me the lowdown. He said, Greg likes you, but his wife hates you like poison. I don't really care, because the last guy I worked for, Buddy Bud Paxson, his wife hated me like poison, too. And then they paid me off seven months not to work anymore. So let's see, I got, what, three years and how many months left on this deal? That sounds good. All right. I'm counting it already. Only $50. WQAM. I got my thumb in my rectum. WQAM. I do. Uh-huh. Pony voice. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, calling from Godforsaken Fort Myers. Yes, sir. How's it going? Great. A little comment about uh, Mad Dog. See, this is good. We don't have to put you on hold and run up your uh, phone bill this That's way. That's exactly right. I, I appreciate it. Uh, a little comment about Mad Dog. I, I think, you know, he's very entertaining, but I believe that the NFL still pulls his puppet strings. I mean, he just spits out exactly what the what the NFL higher-ups say every day and all the coaching. I think, you know, it's a conservative organization, and I... I just don't agree with a lot of the things they think about. I don't believe it. Yeah. For instance, you know, five, ten years ago, it, it was unheard of to have a player play both ways. You know, and now... Oh, I think five, ten years ago, there were a lot of players that went both ways. <laughs> yeah, in more ways than one. I right. get it. But, but today, that, that, they're drafting people because of that. You know, Champ Bailey, and you got your Deion Sanders clones yeah. out there. You know, and, and but why you know, are you I, why, but why are you debating that with me? I mean, I don't. I really couldn't care less. I thought we were making comments about a different person. No, no, that's about Mandich, Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to get into the specifics of what you disagree about. You know, you can you can debate that with him. Well, I disagree with his the fact that he he seems like a uh, uh, NFL shill. Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Man. Have a great weekend, sir. Bye. And God bless you. I am juiced up right now. Good. He'll be here at 2 o'clock. Debate that with him. He'll, he'll be glad to debate with you. He's not one of those guys that slams the phone down on you right away and bitches you out and cusses and carries on, even though he did go to Michigan. In spite of that, he still listens. He's still the kind of guy you can have a discussion with, not like my good friend Ed Kaplan that slams the phone down if you look at him cross-eyed. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that yesterday. Wednesday night, I leave the track. I get in the car. Eddie Decay is on with his gambling show. The very first caller. Talk about a psychic vibration, says, is it true that you uh, play with yourself while the Neil Rogers show is on? And Ed says, why? He says, yeah, Neil today said that uh, you and he were lovers, gay lovers. Now, I got news for it, okay? Ed's a good guy. But anybody ever see Ed Kaplan? Uh-huh. Come on. He's a great guy, but give me a little bit of credit. Nine minutes afternoon at 560 WQM. Kaplan, on Sports Radio, Heart with WQAM. When all computers go offline Y2K and we go die Everybody's gonna die People will panic when murder and havoc I read that in a magazine In a comic book store If you believe it's the end of the world and see the market crashing again. Cause the it's the millennium the long time. So jumping away. Trump will at 560 WQAM. Miami Dade's Cuba policy threatens event. Here's something new and original. Oh! The July 9th to 11th Junior Pan American Games Track and Field Championships at FIU are in jeopardy of being moved or canceled if Cuba decides to compete. <laughs> the Miami-Dade Commission recently opposed any direct or indirect county support to sporting events, including this summer's track and field championships, if Cuban athletes participate. INDER, Cuba Sports Federation, has until June 25th to decide whether it will compete. Controversial decision could also affect South Florida's bid to host the 2007 Pan American Games and Florida's bid to host the 2012 Olympic Games. How do you like that? Dade County has effectively ruined any chances of hosting a major international sporting event, said Robin Beeman, executive director of the USA Track and Field Florida Association. This will have ramifications throughout the U.S. Olympic Committee and International Amateur Athletic Association. This will have ramifications for the U.S. period, it says. How do you like that? As one more time, this hysterical attempt to keep pandering to a bunch of people that want to live in the Stone Age. And, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention last week, and I'm glad that I did. Did you see the poll on CNN? 
I forget what the number was, but a very significant number, uh, the highest percentage ever favor opening diplomatic relations with Cuba. Oi! How do you like that? A survey obviously not taken in Dade County. <laughs> Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's start uh, jamming up the streets, okay, and blocking traffic. And thanks for the good news. Your buddy again. Boy, he's uh, persistent. Only he never gets on the. What air. line was that? Because Southern Bell's tracing all of them. Oh, forget about him right now. No, I didn't. What? They're working on it. They Too didn't. late. Good. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. WQAM. The best part of that scumbag. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I guess we can play my music now, including uh, America, Backstreet Boys, We're not doing that. Garbage. I don't have any other. Well, which music that you like isn't garbage? Oh, I'm sorry. WQAM. WQAM. Play the Will Clark dinner. Okay, see, now here we go. Now we're out of material, okay? You can always tell. We made two and a quarter hours today on a Friday in a lifeless, dead-ass town, which isn't all that bad, but you can always tell the exact moment at which they have just... <coughs> oh, sorry, with all uh, apologies to Peter out there, the facts are... They've just <coughs> run out of material. Isn't that something, huh? Mark it down on our... Uh, we're keeping track of these things. Two hours and 17 minutes today that they actually were able to keep it up. WQAM. Good afternoon, Neil. Yes, sir. Been calling all day, then the phone rings and hangs up, and I finally made it through. Here's the upshot on Hank, if I may. Yes. Um, first of all, something he has no control over, I don't think he does, is the format of that show, the format of the first team. You don't need 20 minute updates, first of all, especially like on a Wednesday afternoon. Right. Every time. What the hell is going on? Yeah, whoever's yeah. responsible for that format leads a lobotomy, putting those long updates so they can repeat the obvious and the, uh, oh, I mean, there's nothing going on. It's Ridiculous. like slapping the audience in the face. It's like inviting people, please tune out because uh, we're testing your endurance. It's like an endurance right. contest. I mean, FAN does the same thing in New York, but they also have shorter breaks, and they have another break between updates, so you go on for maybe three minutes instead of 12. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's just ridiculous. Who ever heard one, of a 12-minute break, especially on an AM station, on any station? Right. Yes, you just go, and unfortunately, there's nowhere else to listen to. Um, you had a caller a while back saying how knowledgeable Hank was. Well, he's wrong. Hank is not knowledgeable. Hank has sources and ways to acquire information. There's a big difference. I mean, if you ask him a general information question about this guy and what record he may have set or what do you think these players are going to do for this certain team, he doesn't have a lot of general information, but he does have a lot of sources to get some information, and there is a difference. He's not a real knowledgeable sports guy at all. I mean, he'll just throw some... Well, then he should fit in perfectly in Miami. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he'll throw some crap off the top of his head and just, like, yeah. answer, and I'm, like, sitting screaming in my radio, like, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, number two, as far as Hank is concerned, is Boy. he's always real, real distracted when he... I mean, he'll be talking to somebody on the phone. I mean, you're on you're on hold forever. Yeah. And then you get through, and, like, someone comes walking through the door, and you can right. see that he's looking at him or talking to him. Meanwhile, the poor schlep on the phone is trying to get his point across before he gets hung up on, and he can't because Hank is not really listening to what he's saying and not really paying attention to the caller. Finally, the thing that drives well, me... Well, there, there seems to be the whole ambiance. I mean, I found it very interesting that uh, now that I'm working on the station and I'm inside the building, and uh, Hank is usually on the outside, but nevertheless, it's, it's kind of like a... Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but like there's all kinds of people wandering around. And like yesterday, right. when he was busy doing the uh, the uh, Belmont draw or whatever he was doing at the beginning of the show, and there's a whole bunch of punks on the air and running around. And yeah, uh, I, I, and I don't know what to call that, you know. Yeah, he's just he's more more concerned with what is going around around him, who's there, who you can wave to, who you can talk to. And again, you're on hold forever trying to get through. If in fact you are talking to him, and it, yeah. it, it sucks because he's not paying attention to you. The thing that drives me, that like, makes me the most aggravated, and I do listen to Hank, obviously. Obviously, nothing, every minute. There's nothing yeah. else on to listen to, uh -huh. quite frankly. Is it's like he can't fight his own battles. His board officer, his producer, whatever they're called, will hang up the phone and will cut his call short on him. Yeah. There's like a half a dozen times per show, he's like, well, where'd he go? Why, didn't he want to stick around and have a conversation? And Hank's thinking that the, the caller hung up, his little pea brain schmuck of a board op is hanging up the phone because he's determining that the call is over, not Hank. Yeah, but not, not necessarily. Now, a lot of times Hank will say, dump it, but you don't hear it on the air because then they hit the dump button, and him saying that doesn't get on the air. So. But there are also a lot of times where he'll say, well, where did he go? Yeah, well, they, go? they are very protective, that uh, crowd in there, They're very, because they, uh, you know, they like their job. <laughs> the format is you better say what you want to say right. because once you stop and let Hank, like, I like to kind of reply to Hank's reply, 
And you have the same thing with mandates a lot is that you don't get a chance to, you know, they'll respond to what you have to say and then you want to maybe further your point or maybe disagree with them and it's like, thanks for calling or you're just dead cut right off. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it sucks. Overall, it sucks. Okay. So one thanks, la one thanks last to, thing. Yes. I, mean, I oh saw Ricky God. Martin on Leno last week and if anybody doesn't realize this guy's a pickle puff or something's wrong. Okay. Have a good one. See ya. I mean, yeah, Deft, I'm in blind. Well, there are a lot of stupid people out there. You know, there were people who used to debate on whether Liberace was gay. You know, I mean, uh, like that's a debatable point. Uh, no. What the hell's wrong with people? I mean, I always thought Truman Capote was pretty butch, but other than that, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line. It's just, uh, you got to understand that an awful lot of straight people out there are very stupid. I hate to break the news to you, but there are a lot of really very naive. I mean, every every now and then I run into somebody that says they never saw a glory hole. They don't even know what it is. And I say to myself when I hear that, oh my God. Jesus Christ, talk about living a cloistered existence. These are the same people that when the priest tells them to get on their knees, they do it and they think they're going to be praying. WQAM, hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Top of the morning to you, my friend. And back to you, sir. I just uh, I want to tell you that I always get a kick out of you. You're a fantastic uh, talk show host. A great a talent, radio a genius, host. A, uh, a maven, yes. Yeah, me. but you know what it is? You're listening. Jean Provocateur. Your listeners make me laugh, too. It's so funny. They proclaim to have so many things against these other people that precede you and come well, after this guy, you. This guy that was just on here that was ripping Hank for 10 minutes, he says he listens every day, and the excuse being there's nothing else on. Now, let, come on, let's get serious. That guy could do a biography on it. Right. I like him, turn it off. He knows every pimple on Hank's... Uh, rectum. you got several listeners. All they want to do is complain. Unfortunately, they haven't made up their mind about free will yet. There are other stations... If they like you and you only, they know the time slot. Right. That's it. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, but we want them listening 24 hours a day, believe me. It helps the bonus money. Yeah, a lot of losers in this town. Okay, thanks. See you. Thanks for the news. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line. It's a screenless Friday. It's still a little on the mediocre side, but we did great till 1217. Mark that down. We have a lot of people out there who uh, keep track of these things, guys who have uh, are totally lifeless and clueless. Have we had a woman today? No. No. Anybody in this audience had a woman today? Uh -huh. How about a call? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. QAM, hello. Hello, I'm speaking, Neil. Speaking. Neil, uh, I got a, a Mad Dog spy report. Well, not a spy report. Something you said about name dropping. Some uh, son of I, a bitch. Yeah. I just heard you say talk about Ron Fraser. I tuned in late, but Mad Dog told a story about how he and Hank were at a uh, Miami Arena, and they were sitting down low. Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholas walked by, and then Hank saw him and goes, "Hey, Jack." Hey, Jack. And Jack Nicholas turned around quizzically and just kind of like gave a little wave to him. Yeah. And the next day, uh, on, on Hank show, he goes, well, I was talking to Jack Nicholas last night. <laughs> yeah. I pulled over. But I like Hank. Yeah. I do. I really enjoy oh, him. He, he enjoys uh, that. He, 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 he likes the name drop. And that's part of the ambiance of his show. And uh, the audience loves they suck up to it, you know. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't get too many chances to call you or Hank. But every once in a while, I try. And, but I enjoy both your shows. Thank God for you, sir. Thank God for one happy listener. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was having dinner with Enrique Iglesias last night, <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, that's Sam. Well, you know, some people, they, they uh, live a uh, fantasy kind of a life. You know, things happen, and they kind of embellish them a little bit. And then they, actually, after the passage of time, they start believing these things. WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, I have a comment from uh, Mr. Neal. What is it? I have a comment from Mr. Neal. Speaking. Excuse me? This is Mr. Neal. This is a radio station? This is the Mr. Neil on QAM, yes. Right. I have the Mr. Neil Rogers Show, yes. Excuse me? I said, how you doing? I'm pretty good, yourself? Good. Yes, um, I was just thinking, um, you was you was talking about, um, did you mention the sports today? Did I mention what? Sports. The sport. The sport? Right. You was talking about um, Dan Marina, right? No. I guess I was listening to the wrong radio, so sorry about that. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> see, I knew I was in trouble as soon as he said I was thinking, because I knew that he was exaggerating. Twelve twenty six at five sixty WQAM. Well, I, this is I don't know. Is it me? Because it's not really all that comfortable in here. It's not hot, but it's clammy and sticky. How about a dehumidifier? Would that do good? Do they make a lot of noise? Not a lot. That would be good, you know. I, I bet you we get uh, quarts, but gallons of I water. I didn't like the uh, the dry air uh, messes with your nose, with your sinuses. It's, uh, it doesn't make it that scabby, dry. No, it doesn't boogers. make. I, I wouldn't mind having scabby, bloody boogers as compared to be feeling like hot and clammy. That's how I feel in here. I feel I'm schwitzing in here, and I'm not a schwitzy person. I don't I'm like sweat a lot. The fan is still around somewhere. No, I don't think we need the fan. It's already almost twelve thirty. 
But the fact is, it's not, uh, this isn't right. This isn't good. And that's what happens when you try and do everything the cheap way, the Beasley way, when you try to nickel and dime, because I don't want to say who it was that told me this morning because he's terrified for his job, but he was telling me about all the different screw-ups in his building and that the contractor did a half-assed, horrendous, grotesque, uh, un- unacceptable job. And when you get a real cheap-ass contractor, and when you get a bunch of people in here don't know their ass from their elbow, uh, cheap, you pay cheap, you get cheap. You get crap. And that's, uh, you know, like I said, we don't care about too much, but these kind of things, like the comfort factor, that's where we draw the line. Then I do care. I like it cool. I like it chilly. Whether Greg Reed's wife likes it or not, I like it chilly, okay? In fact, that's the kind of uh, treatment a lot of people get from me, kind of chilly. There's a message in there somewhere. I'm just a, I'm just a rotten guy, okay? Don't take it personal unless you want to. I'm just an unfriendly, nasty guy. 26 past noon at 560 WQM. Are you... Oh, every time. All right. I'll be rolling with a trunk load in my 81 Buick. And if I have to bust a cap, I just say I didn't do it. Crack City, here I be And when I get to Crack City, I go to the third world. And acts around the club on who be buying my girl. Yeah, I be going to Crack City to the floating nightclubs. Yeah, I be going to Crack City and be stabbing my blood. When I be going to Crack City and unload my junk, I never go to Crack City without packing my gun. Yeah, to rock for every. I know that every now and then I sell some crack to a white dude. Crack City, here I be gone. Some was buck on the intersection working for free food. Crack City, here I be gone. Well, I be cruising by the verbal house with no windows. And be macking on Moesha, she my favorite hoe. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, we go to Crack City, and I go to sell my crack. But I be going to Crack City, you can count on that. I be going to Crack City, and blast my rap. I be going to Crack City, cause I be bad, yeah. To rock for every mind. That's right. Oh, this is supposed to be a guitar here. What are you talking about? You mean you can't play no guitar? I don't know how to play no guitar. Oh, fuck Prop 33 at 560, uh, what is it, 560 WQM, sometimes I get confused, especially when I play that bit. Upgrading to a first-class fine, it says, rowdy passengers take note. Senator Harry Reid, Democrat in Nevada, introduced a bill to raise the penalty for bad behavior aboard air- aircraft from $1,100 to $25,000. Twenty-five grand. Those found guilty could also be banned from flying for a year. Reid noted that on one airline, incidents involving unruly or violent passengers soared from 296 in 1994 to 921 in 1997. The measure now heads to the Commerce Committee, where it uh, hopefully will be defeated. Hear what I said? Hopefully be defeated. Why? Because I don't I I think it's a miracle that there aren't more unruly people on planes. Because the way that they treat you like cattle and the way that they lie to you and the way that they're indifferent and don't give a crap about you is unacceptable. It's amazing that we're all like uh, cattle and sheep and we all sit there very dutifully as they continue lying and lying and lying. Oh well we got a slight delay, we'll be landing in twenty minutes, which usually means about an hour and a half. They lie like yeah. crazy. And they give you crappy food, and they don't care about your comfort. And a lot of times the goddamn air all of a sudden like cuts off, and you're sitting there spitzing your brains out like you're working at QAM. I'm not saying that people ought to be unruly, but it's just the idea that it, uh, they dish out a lot of crap. And that's uh, just the way it is, okay? That's the way it is. WQAM? Yeah, Neil, please. Yeah, you're speaking. I want to speak to Neil? I'm speaking, yes. This is WLD? No, WQAM. I'm sorry, WQAM. Don't say WIOD. I'm psychotic when you say that. Uh, yeah, let's speak about OJ. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, this is not Neil. Yeah, it is. Last time I checked, it looks just like me. 
Is it? I looked straight down. I saw a very, very small penis. It must be me. Oh, uh, Neil, Neil. I mean, now you know it's me, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Neil, I'm OJ. He's a murderer. Right. I understand that. Right. You know, he comes in town uh, yesterday. Everyone pretends, you know, like an alien. Just landed down. He's a killer. I understand that. But right. people got to realize he has two kids. Yeah. Lose weight to his kids. You know, become adults before we just start. We, I understand. He's before guilty. we start what? You know, leave a man alone at least until his kids are. We, we don't. Adults. We don't. We want to leave him alone. All we want him to do is go live someplace else. That's all. We're willing to leave him alone. I don't I give a crap. I mean, I'm willing to live in, uh, in Nebraska. Older, if his wife was a black woman, I would be. <laughs> I don't even think this issue would even be, you know, brought up. Why not? Do you think so? Yeah, of course, because he's a big celebrity. It had nothing to do with whether she was white. It was because he was a famous jock. You know that. I, know, I understand that. I understand it. But you got these people in Western, Darren Bay, say they don't want him in their community. You probably got more murderers and crack dealers and everything else that live in this. In, this, in, 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 in Weston? Correct? There's, there's crack dealers in Weston? <laughs> you got everything. You got Coleman? murderers. You got all kinds of things. Yeah. Correct. I, I don't know. I, well, I don't live in Weston. Okay. Well, why don't more Americans have, you know, more fear, fear when the cops kill innocent blacks? You don't hear this. Up I see, you see, sir, you're, again, you're trapped in this mindset of comparing things together. Always like, well, how come you're not equally pissed off about this? Uh, those of us who are, uh, first of all, Rodney King didn't get murdered, okay? He's still walking around. He got a big multi-million dollar settlement in the lawsuit, and he's still walking around. It was a grotesque, horrible, unacceptable thing. And those of us, including white people, were outraged and nauseated, just like we were nauseated with a cop in New York that's probably going to get life in jail, I think, now the one that stuck the broom handle up the Haitian guy's butt. Uh, we, we're, I hate to break the news to you, we're just as equally outraged whether the victim is black or white or anybody else. Well, Civilized people don't accept barbaric activity whether the victim is black or white. Just correct. like people were outraged over the lynching in uh, Texas, okay? You're right. Okay. So, so, what are you yeah. talking, so why can't you deal with this oh, based on the it. fact that it's... I'm a, black and I know OJ. OJ is guilty as hell. Right. It. So, fine, black, so, male, so let, him move, let him move to North Dakota. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to okay. me. Okay, see ya. Okay. Put some watermelon on a bus and send his ass to North Dakota. Oh, he don't eat watermelon? Well, that's right. He eats McDonald's. Put some Big Macs on a bus. In fact, he deserves Big Macs, okay? It'll kill him that much faster. Right. Let's pack up a big gift package for McDonald's and give it to OJ. And maybe we can even have, you know who will be the bus driver? Roy! Wow. And, of course, you know who that means is going to have to be on a bus. Oh, I'm sorry. 22 before noon at 560 WQM. If you can't stand that slut. Hey, Neil, how you doing? She can't live without her shirt. Will she be on the team? No. With or without food. With or without food. Will she still be on VIP without a cup?
Okay, that's our four question today. Who do you think's got a better body? Jeff Popowitz or Pamela Anderson Lee? It's twelve forty three. Is that before or after? Twelve forty three at five sixty WQM. We got Jim Mandy. Yes. Two o'clock this afternoon. Maybe Jim will get some calls today, I sure hope. He sure deserves to have a few, but you know, that's the way this audience is. They're a bunch of hard asses. You know, they're afraid he might actually know something. And then at six o'clock we got talking baseball with Donald B uh uh whatever his name is. I mean, what what is that? Donald B. Brennan? Is he trying to be like the uh the weather guy? Maybe he's kin to Joe Brennan. He had nothing to do with that. Who did? Who made that up? The first team. Which Ojean Provocateur asshole? Oh, probably Defoe had something I to do with it that. I think it was Defoe. Know. Defoe with that corn ball crap of his. No, what I, by the way, remember what I told you about how they feed corn to the cattle to fatten them up? This is what happened to Defoe since he met Steve Nichol. All of that corn, and look what's look what's happened to him. <laughs> wow. You can call him Don Brennan. You can call him Donnie B. You can call him asshole. He doesn't give a crap. Okay, Donnie B. I, I, there's nothing wrong with Donnie B. It sounds like, you know, like uh, who Donnie B, you know? Does anybody? No. Five six seven oh five sixty. He's a good guy. He's got like kind of a cornball sense of humor that rubbed off from Defoe, but nevertheless, he'll be here at six o'clock. Six thirty, we got the pregame. Seven o'clock, it's the Marlins over on the West Coast to play Tampa Bay. Any interest in that? No. Oh, that's a big matchup, huh? Two sizzling teams. WQAM. Hello. Yes. Oh, I wanted to speak with Neil. Speaking. Oh, sorry, Neil. Um, I I just wanted to uh, ask you a quick question, but uh, first I wanted to say that I love your show and. Uh, I'm doing some really boring stuff here at UM, and you really helped to make the day go. You're at that. UM? Yeah, yeah, one of those uh, rich, spoiled kids. We as don't well. ever get any calls from. I was thinking about that coming <laughs> to work this morning. I can't remember the last time I had a call from anybody at UM. That this is um, unbelievable. And and I'm a female, so. All right, big blow. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm not one of those rich people, so. Um, what, uh, a, what a shame. Oh yeah, well. Always funny. good to know rich people. <laughs> well, um. I had a quick question for you. Sure. Um, I was actually, I was born in Detroit, and uh, I'm a huge hockey fan and a huge, huge Red Wings fan. What about Dick Purton? You know Dick? Oh, actually, I, I don't. I just started uh, following them a couple of years ago. And I No, no, he's not a hockey player. He does a morning show in Detroit. Oh, well, I haven't lived there in a couple of years, so, you know, unfortunately, I have to That's rely okay. on That's okay. I mean, he's only been on the air for like 30 years in Detroit, but he'll, he won't take it personally. Oh, sorry. I'm sure my brother would know him, but... Okay. Uh, after all, I'm brother probably knows which is very unfortunate since they don't know anything about hockey. Huh. But uh, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself at a loss because uh, I really can't stand any of the teams that are less than a playoff. Right, so, I would agree with that, yeah. You know, especially a Claudio Lemieux and his uh, bunch of... Claudio Lemieux, right. Yeah, you know, who's just the Claudius, dirtiest. Claudius Lemieux and his brother Bickus Dickus, right. Yeah, he's just not the dirtiest player you'll ever see. You uh-huh. know? But, uh, and that Patrick Frog. Oh, Please. Can't Red stand syndrome, it. Um, you know, shaking his head all over the place. Right. You know. Yeah, he he does. He's got. In fact, they were trying to say he's got the Tourette syndrome. They were trying to say that one night, and then they found out they were wrong. But they were trying to make an excuse for the fact that he's just uh, spastic. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. He just every time the camera's on him, which is an often, he's yeah. always shaking around. He's shaking it. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But I I can't stand them. You know, and uh, Dallas isn't much better. No, than but Brett. that well, that Brett Hall. Oh, I can't stand oh, that thing. Oh, yeah, well, Buffalo too. And that know. and that coach of theirs, that Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, I just despise that team. Great. Yeah. They're yeah. so boring. This is one of the most. They had a great record, but you just watch them, and you can, it's like watching paint dry. Just a boring ass team. Well, the best thing was last year when the stupid city of Dallas hung that banner that proclaimed them the champions, and then a, uh, you know, Detroit happily uh, knocked yeah. them out. That was great. But uh, you know, and then you've got. Boston. I'm telling you that Eddie the Beagle. You'll see. He'll uh, those choking, gagging sounds. They're talking a big <laughs> game now, but you'll see when it comes push comes to shove, he'll let in a real greasy one. You'll see. He yeah, always does. I, just I, like I, the Beezer, he always lets in a greasy one. Well, the thing is, I'm I'm hoping that he lasts just through Colorado because I think that they're the worst of the three. Yeah. But then what do you do? Because well, what about so let's do it for Buffalo? I mean, I don't want to you know hate well, Buffalo just because they beat my Maple Leafs. I mean, that that yeah. seems like a hundred years ago now. We like Buffalo. We got Stu Barnes and Jason Woolley and Lindy Ruff, the coach. All these ex Panthers on there. Rhett Warner. Well, yeah, you have to love uh, Lindy Dominic Ruff. Dominic Katchuk. Yeah, well, him and his growing injury, whatever. Yeah. But uh, and his overacting, yeah. Well, you know, I problem with let's that root for the that... Sabers. What do you say? Should we root for Buffalo? Come on. I, but they take dives. You come within three feet yeah, and they, you see them Well, I understand the they signed up Greg Lucenis for the final round. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was wondering Speaking if you... Speaking of U of M. If, you know, I'm probably going to root for uh, for Buffalo, but I was Good. wondering if you think they had a chance. No. No, no chance. What do you think? What do you think? Whoever wins the West, regardless, which I'm hoping for Colorado. I know I don't like Claude Lemieux or Patrick Frog, but I'm, I'm pulling for Colorado. I find Dallas to be very just terminal, ponderous. 
Was, and in addition to which, they play on that horrible ice there. It's like, like I said, like watching paint. It's like playing a hockey game on quicksand there in Dallas. Oh, terrible. It is. It's the worst. Well, they're there tonight. You think that uh, Colorado's going to pull that out? I think they're going to pull it out tonight. And don't forget it. They're playing on the road. They stink at home in the playoffs, but on the road, they're almost uh, unbeatable. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, I appreciate your opinion. Dude. Okay. Have good, a great week. And have good luck to the uh, Canes. Right, now, wait, now, wait a minute. Do you know Jeff uh, Pop? Uh, what's his name? Actually, I Popovich. Yes. Popovich. You know him? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a real smart kid. You'd like him. He's very attractive. He's a model. Yeah, <laughs> he should be. No, he no he is. See, they don't believe me. He's in the Abercrombie and Fitch catalog. He's got an identical twin brother, Doug. Really? And the two of them are in the summer Abercrombie and Fitch catalog. Do you you know him personally? Oh, actually, I do. He's in a, He's from Arizona. Yeah, he's a biomedical engineer. He's so. by. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that would be good for uh, both sexes, definitely. He's right. a very nice guy. Well, very check nice. him and his brother out. Oh, I will. Okay, I will. okay, you. see. Ya. There's somebody that knows Jeff uh, Pop Off or whatever his name. Oh! Is. Like that. What did that pop it off? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile online. See that? Somebody from the U of M. Boy, he could knock me over with a feather duster. And they don't believe it. She says he ought to be a model. That's how good he looks. He is a model, sweetheart. He's in the Abercrombie and Fitch catalog, the summer edition. He's in there right now. That fucking bitch. Yeah. The Abercrombie and effing bitch catalog. He's in there with his twin brother. Hanging from the tree like Tarzan with his big, uh, with his, not big, but his rectum. shapely rectum hanging out. Which, uh, and, and they don't want to believe me. Go down to Dayland. You don't even have to buy the catalog. Just look at the cover, okay? And there he is. There is your number 38 on the Hurricanes. I, I tell you, if they all looked like that, I'd become a, a Canes fan in no time at all. I'd be at every game. I'd be the only one, but I'd be there with my pom-poms. QAM, hello. Hi, I'd like to speak to Neil. Speaking. Oh, Neil, I, I can't believe this. It took me 10 years to get to grow the cojones to actually call you. Right. But I actually did. Well, better late than never. It, it, no, I'll, to tell you the truth, um, the first time I seen you was at Benson's about 10 years ago, yeah. right after you had a stroke. Right. And I remember saying to my friend who turned me on to you, man, this guy's not going to make it a week. Yeah, I was in bad shape. And you were in this tent. It was so hot, and you right. were signing autographs. Right, and paper we were signing plates. like the back of paper plates and dollar bills because we had <laughs> no, no picture cards because uh, Kurt the terrible. Jerk was doing such a great job on promotions. Yeah. One thing about me, I've worked on stations that have the worst, most incompetent, most impotent uh, promotions people you'd ever want to see in your life. Well, this is fun. Anyway, like this, this one. This is such an honor to talk to you. Um, 34 years, Neil. I did my sentence in North Miami, and my sentence is up June 30th. I'm moving out. All right. Uh, Where are you going? Actually, north of you in the West Sunrise. Oh, I thought you were, when you said you move, <laughs> moving out, I thought you were talking about to like a civilized place somewhere. And compared to where I've been living, Neil, anything is civilized. Yeah, uh, well, another 40 years, you'll be old enough to live like right in the middle of Sunrise. Oh, well, the things I've seen here, I don't care. Well, anyways, in closing, remember yes, you were talking yesterday, somebody called you about penises and trash. and Right. You remember that? Uh-huh. Well, the only thing I can say is that uh, I choke mine every day, so I must, I hate it. And don't throw it in the trash. Bye, Neil. Okay. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the mobile one line. He's choking it. And, of course, these people that were ripping Hank before, you know, it's interesting, except for one or two who said that they tune out, you know, at 2 o'clock, which there may be a few of those people. But with the exception of those, you notice that the other ones do listen every day to the Hank Goldberg show. You do notice that, don't you? Uh-huh. Yes. And, of course, if they were to do this on some other show about this show, I mean, then, I mean, there would be a barrage. Oh, Neil is this, and he has all those <laughs> sounds, and yada, 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 and uh, too much with that fag stuff, and whatever. They'd find 50 million reasons. And then, of course, that little George, when he goes on it, they would be psychotic. But you know something? They're all listening right now, every one of them. There isn't any radio on in this town right now, including the competition, including the people over there at Queer Channel. Every single one of them is listening right now, and they're squeezing themselves. And, of course, in the case of Pete Bolger and John Ford, squeezing each other. As they're listening, getting such excitement, at every word, they're hanging on it. And, of course, both of them only should hang. If there is a hell, if there's a radio hell, those two will surely be there burning forever. Especially Peter Bolger. I mean, the other one, he's just a pimp. He's like the tag. He's a pimp. We should have known it was Bolger all the time, which sounds like Barzini, you don't it? So if I were you, if I were going to the courthouse, Pete, I wouldn't be walking up there with my pinstripe suit with my back to the, uh, you know what I'm saying, to the limo. WQAM. Okay, good hearing from you. How long was that on? For like a quarter of a second. I got the fastest finger in the south. I'll tell you that right now. You know what I'm talking about? Uh Uh-huh. WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. This is uh, the Neil Show? The Neil Show, yes. Yeah, I want to talk to uh, Neil. Neil who? The guy. The, the guy, guy what? On the show. What's his name? 
His name is Neil. Neil what? <laughs> I don't know his last name. Neil Downs? No, I don't know. Okay, hold on. Where are you calling from? Uh, Miami. Okay, let's go to Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. This is Neil? Yes. Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about that crack city bitch you just did. Right. Oh, you think that's funny? I think it's hysterical. I think it's a panic. Why you say it? You think all black people want crack or something? Does, does that say that all black people do crack? It was uh, about crack people. What do you mean crack? No, you're talking about Maurice and you're talking about, oh, every now and then I sell crack to a white dude. Yeah. How did you were applying that? It was a black guy singing the thing and it was all black people Well, that, crack. that one happened to be a black dude that's uh, black crack We all live dude. in Crack City or something? Yeah. Do, do you live in Crack City? No, I live in the ghetto. Well, well then you probably, then you no, probably, no, do, then you probably do live in Crack what? City. No, I don't live in Crack City. Yeah. Do you have a crack problem? No, I don't have a crack problem. Yeah, how about a crack problem? No, I don't. Okay. You, you think this is a joke? Do crack I think what is a joke? Crack is a big problem. What is and it? It's not funny for all you white boys to sit in your car and all you, and all you white boys, all you white boys. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You're not, you're not a racist, are you, sir? No, I'm not a racist. Oh, okay. But just, but just checking, just wanted to make sure. Because you wouldn't put that on WEDR. Well, Why not? They wouldn't dare put that. They'd, they'd love to. They'd love to put it on. No, they wouldn't. They'd love to. Yeah, all right, buddy. They only wish they had that bit. Whatever, man. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's uh, six till one on the Neil Down Show. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile. See what I'm saying? You got to lighten up several shades, okay? And you're not doing it, man. You're not even trying. Get a sense of humor, okay? Get a life. Get a life. Stop being so uptight. Stop being so professionally militant already, will you? Just get a goddamn life. Everybody else, it's okay for us to laugh at ourselves, but if you happen to be a little uh, over the Richter scale, like two shades, right away we got to have a few militant assholes out there like this guy. All right, well, yeah, all right. He don't even know what he's listening to. He don't know the name of the station. He don't know my name. Okay? The hell's wrong with you, man? Get with it. And as far as Moesha is concerned, she's got a serious Rectum. problem, okay? So leave her that bitch alone, Moesha. And what, and what kind of a name is Moesha anyway, by the way, now that he mentioned it? What kind of a crappy name is that? Moesha. QAM. Yes, hello. Moesha Rogers show, yes. Yes, uh... Oh, it's a Jewish name, like Moesha. M-O-I-S-H-E. You know something? I just figured it out. They're just mispronouncing Moesha. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Yes, uh, I'm a first-time caller. And, uh... Hello? I'm listening. I I don't believe you, but go ahead. I know who this is. Yeah, I'm a first-time caller. uh, Every time you call, I'm a first-time caller with that same uh, Julio sound, like a little baby, that little baby talk. First-time caller. First-time caller. First time caller this minute, okay? 50 million time caller, pain in the ass, chronic Julio with no life. But other than that, have a great life, okay? We'll see you on the Calle Ocho Day. Yeah, with Neil. We'll see you with Neil. Talk to Neil. First time caller. Silly little spick. Go out and learn English, okay? Will you ever take your goddamn visa away? Maybe your Discover card, too, you jackass. 1256 at 560 WQAM. Here's QAM, Miami. It's a one to two hour. Ahora, en Univision, es el show de esta noche con Hey Leno. Now, have you uh, heard about this show? Have you seen about this show? Now, of course, I'm going to say, Hey, boy, horny, huh? Oh, yeah, are you kidding me? Ass lover, yes. Oh, yeah. Y mañana, señor Tom Broca tiene un intento examinación de la Red Light Distrito de Amsterdam. Esta es Tom Broca en Nueva York. Yo tengo un reporto de las señoras que danzo en el buffo por dinero. También te gusta Ross, Rachel, Feobe, Monica, Joey y Chandler en Amigo. Aww. Mi esposa es un lesbiana. Es muy cool. Finalmente, en la película de Late Late Noche, mucho, mucho más préstasis. En 3D. Solamente en Univision. It's a minute after one at 560. Buenos dias. We got Jim Maddich at two. We got Donnie B at six. And then the Marlins and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays at, after that. You don't want to know. WQAM, Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if you listened to uh, the Ed Kaplan show last night. Yes, somebody, I no, I didn't. Last night, no. Somebody called in and uh, said that uh, Mike Lowe hit a home run. Or what was his account? Said that what? That Mike Lowe hit a home run last night, right? And he goes, at what count? He asked uh, Ed Kaplan, at what count did you hit it? Uh, and he said, oh, I don't know. And the guy said, two strikes and one ball. 
get it. WQAM. Hello. Yes, sir. Jack, I have a question for Neil. Mm-hmm. Speaking. Who's speaking? No, I said I'm speaking. Yes, how you doing? Good. Yeah, so I would like to know why you sell out so much on the, on the phone. Why I what? On the radio. You sell out so much. Sell out to what? Huh? Sell out what? Why you were wrecking on the black people, man? What are you talking about, man? I told him, why you were talking bad about Moesha? Because she black? Who's Moesha? My dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. That was great. Oh! Now we know what that means. WQAM. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, you know, I listen to Hank's show, and, you know, i got to admit the funniest part about the show is when Hank talks about dating, you know, like going out on dates. Yeah. I mean, that's real comedy. Yeah. And don't you agree? or? No, no, I don't agree. What? what the, I, I say more power to him, okay? If he wants to well, pay uh, high-priced hookers and he's willing to talk mean. about, that's his business. Well, What's wrong with that? Well, I'm just saying, does Hank Everybody have... has different kinds of dating, okay, sir? I understand, sir? but does Hank have one steady or does he have a stream uh, of Why hookers? don't you ask him, okay? I don't know. I'll call him up and ask him, all right? I don't know. I don't really uh, keep close tabs on it, okay, sir? All I know is, from what I hear, he's got real good taste, and you're probably jealous. WQAM, hello. Hey, George. What George. is it? Yeah. I want to talk to um, Neil. About what? About, um, the, what are you saying, why the ratings went down? Yeah. Well, what do you, oh, think, it, what do you I, think it was? I'm sorry? I said, what do you think it was? The Florida Morning Game. Okay, thanks. WQAM, hello. Ed Kaplan, you're a son of a bitch. WQAM. Hey, George, want to speak to Neil? Okay, hold on, where are you calling from? Hey, Neil. Yeah. How you doing? Great. Good. Boy, you picked me up cold. You caught me We're doing surprise. screenless today. It's a screenless Friday, and so far it's been uh, spectacular. Oh, great. I'm one of your... Every now and then I do this, just uh, I don't know why. I'm one of, I'm one of your, I'm one of your um, biggest fans, one of your darker complexion fans. I have, you were talking about Mandage earlier? Now, don't go picking on Moesha. <laughs> <laughs> don't go spanking Moesha. No, no. I wanted to say something about uh, Mad Dog. Okay. I was listening to him yesterday, and he had, yes! <laughs> he had another one with classic lines. Somebody was talking to him about uh, Patrick Ewing's injury, mm-hmm. and and uh, Mad Dog was talking about some how, son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> Mad Dog was talking about how uh, bad he looked, and he said Patrick Ewing came out in the game and was stiff as a bridegroom's penis. Wow, big time, unbelievable. Love you, Neil. You wouldn't hear that on the uh, John Moynihan show. Not at not at all. Oh, and one other thing, you played uh, the parody of uh, Cops earlier. Did you hear about the Supreme Court ruling the other day about TV crews and and law enforcement? No. Uh, the Supreme Court rule, you cannot take camera crews out anymore. You know how cops, they go in and burst down doors. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, love you, Neil. Okay, thanks. Take care. Yeah, sure, if Nick would be all psychotic about that. Of course, he don't have to worry since him and Preston and his hen won their million dollars in Vegas. All right. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T. Well, see, there's no God. Piece of crap like Nick Navarro goes out there and wins a million dollars in Vegas. I go out there and lose 2700 What does that tell you? WQAM. <laughs> WQAM, hello. You are my fire, the one desire. Believe when I say I want it that way. Rectum. All right, there you go, Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. No, he sang, he sang way better than Nick. No, he did not. Michelle agreed. Yeah. You're full of crap, okay? You're Now you're starting to get me really upset. I'm going to get psychotic. <laughs> All right. I'm singing this song and I'm feeling kind of sad. I got my smile from mom, but my check came from my dad. I've got a body like a driving range mat. When it's cold outside, use my nips to hang your hat. I can blow in your ear, give you a lap dance. But you won't notice me till I get some implants. I need a guy who ain't got issues like feeling up a chest and finding tissues. Guys say I'm cute, they say I'm pretty. I'm not one who needs your pity. I've got a nice ass and her like a kissy, but I can't get a man because I got no titties. Got no titties. Wonder bra, it's something I can't afford. 
When you lay on me, you'll swear you're on a diving board. When I turned 11, I started to get puked. Now I'm 24, and still waiting on my boob. Guys say I'm cute. They say I'm pretty. I'm not one who needs your pity. I've got a nice ass and fur like a kissy. But I can't get a man, cause I've got no titties. I've got no titties. I've got no titties. I've got no titties. Crap. Okay, 116 at 560. Speaking of that, by the way, Chris Reed's getting married. The nephew, which I forgot to mention two hours ago when he was in here with a picture. Wow, all these guys got to show pictures, you know? Has anyone told his fiance what a dog he is? No. She probably never smelled him after one of those workouts at the gym. She probably don't understand why he keeps hanging out at the gym. But anyway, yeah, that's we're going to talk about that on Monday, okay? The thing with the wrestlers, that was just the beginning. We're going to unmask all this BS, but guys that hang out at the gym a lot and, like, take showers at the gym, even when they're not working out there, they just go there to take a shower. I always wondered about that. Anyway, Chris Reed's getting married to some girl from Mississippi who says it's a treat to beat your feet on the Mississippi mud, is what she said. And then what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, Joe Costello was just in here in spite of the aberrant things he was saying about the Backstreet Boys. I, You know, you're not fooling me for a second, Joe, but it makes me feel good because I know you've got crappy taste, so they must be just as great as I think they are, their music, because if you don't like them, they must be fantastic, which is why Millennium is the number one selling album in the world. The first week on the chart, by the way in virtually every country, on the Euro chart, the American chart, Canadian chart, you name it, it's number one. Anyway, tomorrow on the Joe Costello, his uh, crappy, it says right here, crap, crap uh, racing show. Don Garlitz and Shirley Muldowney, famous drag uh, queen, uh, famous drag racers. What? And he's got a couple of famous drag queens on tomorrow, Don Garlitz and Shirley, Shirley Muldowney. I mean, Don Garlitz, I have heard that name, okay? And that's old time. That goes back, even I know that. That's from 100 years ago. Shirley Muldowney, I mean, there are women in this thing, too? Is she some kind of a, huh, you think? Maybe Joe will have the balls to ask her that. Maybe it's a guy named Shirley. And see, you people, one of the reasons that the sports talk is so boring on this station is because you're not creative. You know, everything is like right down the line. It's got to be real serious. Like when Mandish is on today. He was on yesterday. He's on again today for Hank. Does anybody call and, you know, corner him on that thing about the Michigan quarterback that he was attacking all over last season, and then all of a sudden they won that big bowl game, and uh, this pretty guy, I can't even think of his name anymore. He don't like those pretty boy quarterbacks. He likes guys with that pug, flat face that look like they're running into a brick wall, like Greasy's kid, you know, like Brian Greasy. Does anybody corner him on that? No. Because no, he did a complete turnaround, so to speak, on that kid after Michigan won the bowl game. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden he was a star. They were great which I can't think of that kid's name, but I sure wish I could. I do remember what he looks like. WQAM. Yes, hi. Uh, is this Neil? Yes, it's speaking. I am absolutely sick of my cable. and wanted to know if you still recommended your buddy there, Muhammad. Yes, and oh, i got to tell him, mean, this must be Psychic Friday. Thank you. I mentioned a few days ago, well, I think it was one day last week, that I was getting a 4D TV receiver for my big dish. Yes. I get a call yesterday from Muhammad. I thought he was going to cry on the phone, like like I've turned on him. And, uh, yeah, he's still around. George has got the number. He's great. He's the best. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Do you want his and number? Also, I love Hank, too. Great. Hang on. Thanks. Give him Mohammed's number. Yeah, Mohammed was psychotic. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, what did I do to you? And, uh, you know, he's, so, and by the way, I agree with you, Mohammed. I've had the 4D TV receiver for about a week and a half. And uh, I hate to say this, especially for my friends out there in Phoenix who are listening right now who sell them. And I hope you make a lot of money. But uh, for me, the answer is no, no I'm not going to keep this. No way. As far as I'm concerned, they suck. When you change from one channel to another, or one transponder to another, it's real, real slow, and it kind of sits there and thinks about it. In addition to which, the digital programming, which there's a lot of it out there now, but it, it, it's almost all of it is the pay uh, TV stuff, you know, uh, 80 uh, channels of HBO and 200 channels of the movie channel, and I've already got HBO and Cinemax on my regular, uh, who the hell needs that, you know? 95% of the digital stuff that's on there is the extra pay stuff, and the stuff that went digital on the small dish, is that on the big dish, on the digital? No. No. So it's very impractical as far as I'm concerned. And Mohammed told me, uh, basically, I don't want to misquote him, but he said that the 4D TV receiver is a piece of crap, is what he said, which is why he never sold me one in the first place when they first came out a year and a half ago. So I'm not keeping it. But he was he was uh, wounded. No, because he always does a great job for me, and he was uh, very uh, psychotic to think that. And, of course, that was a Rimmer deal. You know, Rimmer set me up with this guy who's a good guy, sold it to uh, on trial, keep it for a while, don't pay for it, you know. 
See how you like it. Do I like it? No. Hate it. Can't stand it. That's just my own personal advice, okay? I don't want to, like, uh, talk anybody out of buying one of these 4D TV uh, receivers, but quite frankly, I think they're a piece of crap myself. QAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. God, did your mom, when you were little, ever call you a Yenta? No. no. I was always quiet. I'm making up for it now. <laughs> um. So, in regard to Hammer. Well, that was important stuff about my receiver there. Not I really. know. You just were going on and on. Yeah. I know. So, Hammer, I, I just, uh, when, two, when 2 o'clock comes, I switch the dial. Not like Peter, but I switch the dial. Uh, just uh, I don't know. He just doesn't move. Then. You switch your dial to what? To either FM. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't go to... Not to that. I don't go to babbling. So Nobody would go to that. No, no. Now, he, what are you saying? The slow is, it doesn't go anywhere? It's slow? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But it's just... Um, it's just Like, like you mean the long pauses in the dead air? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. It's, yeah, like that card you have of the Hank Goldberg uh, School of Broadcasting. Right. That's it's him to a T. I yeah. know. I mean, he's a great guy. I never called the show, but he's a good I, guy. I can only handle about. He's badly misunderstood because, again, people don't understand it's just a radio show, so they misunderstand him. Exactly. Exactly. Ha- have a great day. And back to you. Thanks. And these guys that are jealous because Hank's getting laid a lot with these, uh, you know, high-priced uh, whatever they are. That's his business. What? What is it? Your business? Get a freaking life. Get a freaking life. God, it's it's just uh, t- terrifying to me the number of no life assholes out there that want to create some vicarious existence for themselves by sticking their nose in everybody else's uh, rectum wherever they're sticking it. You know, get a life, you idiotic. Yeah. By the way, can we play that today? No. And no, we gotta wait till that lawsuit gets done. WQAM, hello. Yes, Neil. Yes, sir. About uh, gyms, they have the Lord's gym. Have you heard about that? The what? The Lord's gym. No. It's a Christian uh, gym. Are you serious? I swear to God, it's on University. Work it out for Christ? Yeah, that's where Dr. James Kennedy works out. Oh, is that where he works it out, huh? I bet you he takes a lot of showers in that joint. <laughs> and they all got little Christian crosses, and uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and if you open up the shower door and there's somebody in there, they hold up a crucifix. <laughs> Take it easy. Okay. See, when Dracula did it, it meant get the hell out of here. When they hold it up there, it means come on in, pal. That, yeah, these people that hang out at the gym, like there's this one place in Fort Lauderdale, I think it's called Bitter Bottoms. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Uh, didn't you back when uh, your WIOD days, weren't you in a feud with Hank? Uh, well, like for one day, yeah. No, nah, it was more than that. No. I think you're scared of him. Oh, yeah, I'm terrified of Hank, yeah. Uh, nah, Hank's a good guy. I like listening to his show, but I, I enjoy managing a little bit better. Uh, just because, uh, you know, he has that... Yeah, I'm so, I'm so terrified of Hank, that's why I'm letting all these people say what they want to say. You know. I'm terrified. <laughs> nah, Hank's a good guy. I like, he is a good guy. I like, wa- I like listening to Hank. I don't like watching I don't like watching him, no. I do like he listening. He looks like he lost a little bit of weight. He lost a lot of weight. He lost 35 pounds. Yeah, so I'm on ESPN this morning. Right, uh, and you don't even need the, the widescreen TV to see him anymore. Yeah, I, I know, exactly. Before, it, it was like he took up the whole screen. It was just right. the corner of his nose. Well, i got to go wipe my ass. Okay. Don in Fort Lauderdale. Hello, Don. Don't start with that crap, will you please? You want to start that crap all over again? Well, what? Are, you're bad. No wonder these people hate you like poison. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. See, a lot of people haven't figured out the reason we took a dump in the trend again is because I was on vacation for a month in that trend. See, I wasn't going to say that because we've been doing great these other months. I think that's the month they finally caught on to you and your crap. QAM, hello. Neil God. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Okay, a thing about Jeff Popowitz. Yeah, I got, a, got a couple of things. He is a good-looking guy. So if I leaned over to the same sex, I'd be rubbing his muscles. Mm-hmm. You'd be rubbing out. his muscle? Well, whatever. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> he's hung out. I used to go. He's I hung? Be, I used to be Here's a guy that would be rubbing his muscle and says he's hung. Okay, keep keep uh, digging that hole. Tell me about it. So, look, he's been in the uh, – I was in the marching band, so we uh, – you know, for, you know how fat parties go. Yeah. And so, you know, he's a pretty good-looking guy. He had a couple of women around him, but – there was a couple of guys that were taking a nice, swift look at him, too. Uh-huh. He's a great-looking guy. I haven't Maybe seen he his spreads brother. it around. Well, most of those people in Abercrombie and Fitch catalog, they get around, you know? Tell me about it. I haven't seen his brother. Is his brother in the catalog as well? Yeah, yes, just... yes, he is. They're identical. I mean, they are exactly the same. Okay. Now, even, even their rectum are identical. Uh, well, I, I, I'll let you know if, if, if I lean towards that section. Now, let me tell you uh, about uh, Hank. Yeah. The thing, uh, the thing that doesn't work about his show is that he... It takes about 14 minutes just for his show to start. He's on for two minutes. And he's a slow starter. You're minutes. right about that. Slow starter. I would agree with that. And but all, overall, he's a great guy. He has great comments. And but you know, just like in everybody else's show in that station, we just don't have any good callers. Okay. All right. Thanks for making an exception. You're welcome. See ya. Well, he said that. Uh, what do you say, Jeff Popper, which is hung and something like that, and hangs it in every direction he can. And his brother ain't bad either, is what he said. 
Don't forget Abercrombie and Fitch summer catalog. There's one Abercrombie and Fitch in Aventura and one in Dayland. Go in there, and they only make a limited edition of those too, by the way. Yeah, so you better grab yours while you can in the catalog too. I mean, there's all kinds of things in there. There's all there's breasts and uh, uh, rectum and everything, and some women too. One twenty six at five sixty WQM. If you suck my dick. No. Rude, obnoxious, foul, and distasteful. The dolphins are cursing, and man, it's disgraceful. Cause Brian Cox and the rest of them are saying, Suck my dick, make my ball shit on you, mother. Words of love they toss in the microphone The dump button just can't seem to be left alone And all of this is because they like saying Suck my dick, lick my ball, shit on you, motherfucker Oh, but they play football badly Say that how did the Patriots kick their ass? Look, my d- when will they make it to the Super Bowl? But with an attitude as bad as theirs, what? they're tossing our hopes down the stairs. Oh, man. Rude, obnoxious, foul, and distasteful. The dolphins are cursing, and man, it's disgraceful. Because Brian Cox and the rest of them are singing. Suck my dick, lick my ball, shit on you. Yes, they're saying. Suck my dick, lick my ball, love the Oh, they're saying, Suck my dick, lick my balls, shit on you. Suck my dick, lick my balls, shit on you, motherfucker. 132 at 560 WQAM. Don't forget Joe Costello tomorrow with those dra- drag queens. WQAM, hello. WQAM. Hello. Yes. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? Great. Um, I- I'm going on vacation this weekend. I'm going up to Disney. Uh huh. And I just found out, I have nothing against gays, but... Better watch I, your rectum. backside. But I, I don't want my daughter subjected to that, basically. Subjected to what? Well, just a bunch of gay people. Uh-huh. Then what are you going there for this weekend? Well, I'm not going now. Oh, okay, but I was good. Wondering... Well, have a nice weekend. Five six seven oh five sixty. Yeah, God forbid there should be a bunch of fruitcakes around, like the ones that are in all those costumes up there, which is every one of them. God forbid your children should be subjected to having a bunch of homos around. And, you know, it's interesting, there was a, a thing in the paper about that, the fact that all these uh, fundamentalists and lunatics out there, all these homophobes, the fact that they keep, pu- keep pub- uh, publicizing it means that they're going to have a bigger turnout than they ever had before. How do you like that? Oh! More queens than ever before at the Disney this weekend because everybody else keeps making a big song dance. Everybody says, oh, it's, uh, it's that, so we'll be there with bells on, with bells on our nose and rings on our toes. Yeah, we don't want our children to dig. Okay, so I'll find another weekend, okay? There's like 51 other weekends in a year. Find one of those. And guess what? It'll still be gay day, no matter when you go, whether you like it or not. Five, uh, what is it? 5670560. QAM, hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Speaking, yes. Turn that radio down, sir, please. Okay. It's down. Okay. I got a question. I got a comment about the OJ situation. What's, what situation is that? I don't want about where this guy's supposed to live. How about uh, Alaska would be good? That's one of the states. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh-huh. But, uh, How about the Aleutian Islands sounds good? <laughs> huh? Let him go up there and try that trick on the Eskimos. They know how to deal with guys like him. Okay, so what's the man committing crime in the United States? Where is he supposed to live? They're going to make a space Once a guy is a murderer, I say as far away from us as possible sounds good to me. Yeah, so How about in New Hampshire would be good? They'll fix his good. ass in a hurry. Okay. WQAM, hello. See, and the interesting thing about this, hang on, the interesting thing is none of these people are saying they don't think he did it. Everybody takes it for granted because you have to be a moron not to not to know that he done it. But other than that, like, you know, all he did was murder two people and, like, almost sever her head. But other than that, what's the problem? QAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Great. Good, good afternoon. Um, one question, please. Um, yeah. Did you finally get to see the Shawshank Redemption? No. Oh, it's a great movie. I got it. All right. Anyways, there are two things I want to I will, talk about. I will watch that before I watch The Sopranos, though. I guarantee you that. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Listen, there are two comments I wanted to make about what you were talking about this morning about traffic. See, that's a subject that you'll always get a story to, you know. But um, you mentioned one time before about when you're waiting in the red light and they, everybody's turning left, and then when they get the red and you get the green, 
there's still people turning right, and turning. There's still like five, six more turning oh my against God. the red light, running that happened, light. That happened to me on two days ago, and it's like, you know, and well, anyways, another situation is when you go to the store and everyone parks in front of the store, either to use the ATM at the store or just going into Publix, you leave the car right outside the store. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Sure, all the time. That that's That's the worst. But the uh, question about that, is there a way that you can actually do something about that, like call the fire marshal and tell them, hey, this store is just allowing these people just to park in front of the store? Yeah, but, you know, it, it all depends. I mean, like, for example, there's a, there's a mailbox in front of my Publix, uh -huh. and a lot of times I'll go there to, uh, you know, drop letters in, the, in a box, and, and I'll park in that little fire lane there for like 10 seconds. I get out, I throw the stuff in the box, and I pull away, you know, and I, I've seen guys get ticketed for that, and that's, that's nitpicking, you know, it's getting carried away. No, I know, but sometimes people will leave it there, and actually right. I'll see them shop. Inside. Right, right. Or yeah. they'll have some uh, some jackass inside that they're waiting for, and they're sitting there using it as like a parking spot, right? Yeah, but you're right about that. I always see them like giving people, uh, the police giving people tickets for speeding, but whenever somebody is cutting people off and doing stuff, I look at the, the cops that are maybe a couple of lanes away, and they don't do anything about no, they're, it. They're busy going home to get a you know, carton of milk or to go to get the donuts or something like that. They, right. they, they're always uh, oblivious to stuff like that because uh, who knows why? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, and in closing, Neil, Backstreet boys kick ass all right all right see you. see there you go i mean there's no question about it it's just still, uh it's uh given huh still no straight guys like them other than my friend dave and this guy right well he likes the one song the guy that just called he's straight no he doesn't just like the one song he likes the group he likes their music and this guy was straight yes and likes their music too See, you, you just assume, you see the world through the eyes of George Rodriguez. You don't understand that not everybody sees the world the way you do. Here's a guy that never saw a glory hole, didn't even know what it was, and he thinks the whole world... Well, hey, I knew what they were, I, I never saw one. No, you did not. Sure I did. Yeah, right. You had you never heard the term in your life before you I started I heard you guys talking all the yeah, time, right. plotting yeah. and scheming. Right, in the next stall. 23 before 2, just before you hear those drilling sounds. I like the wee-wee. So it's out of the closet. Joe Rose loves the Backstreet Boys. How do you like that? Oh! Well, I think you had a point. Way down in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, they got the best herb that you ever seen. Yeah, yes. Ask anybody in that neighborhood. Oh! They tell you this the country where the country be good. Okay. Rasta man has some he want to sell. And from a mile away, you can detect the smell of smoke. <laughs> Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Ooh. He lights up the spliff and talk. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. And the light bulb. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. Get out of there, You can carry lots of herb in the gunny sack. Smoke it every day until your lungs turn black. With all the money that we have made, Roy. Jamaica doesn't need any foreign aid. American tourists come here and say, Got nothing like this in the USA. They smoke, smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. They light up the spliff and talk. They begin to puff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke. Smoke, the ganja be good. Mama tells her son you are a Rasta man. You like to smoke the giant spliff whenever you can. Many people coming here from miles around to buy the herb from you by the ounce and the pound. Rasta man say to her, Mama, you're right. The ganja be good tonight, and then they smoke. All right. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Yeah. They light up the spliff and talk. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. Incredible. Come on. Oh! It's 143 at 560 WQM. So here's the facts. I knew I'd be getting the facts from my good friends Bob and Karen in Phoenix, Arizona, about the 4D TV big dish uh, receiver. It says, we recommend keeping the 4D TV satellite receiver a little bit longer, giving it a chance is what it says. No. There's no substitute for a first-generation signal. Make sure you get your 
<coughs> free preview turned on and have Mohammed show you how to get all the free pay per view channels. Mohammed says it's a piece of crap. There are many channels available only on 4D TV. Then it goes on. Liberty Media is about to announce a major digital sports package. Uh, the programming on 4D TV is about half the cost of Direct TV. It took me about two months to learn how to utilize all the features. It says it's true the guide is slower, but I use my 4D TV first and Direct TV second. Let me know if I can be of any assistance, say Bob and the Karen <coughs> in Phoenix. Well, uh, thanks, Bob and Karen, but I think the answer is no. Uh, not just the guide. I don't use the program guide. Who the hell needs that? It's the uh, just the changing even of the transponder, changing the channel on the same uh, satellite. And then when you go to fine-tune a satellite, it's like about a three-step project as opposed to the old general instrument receivers, which you do like in a, in a heartbeat. Because uh, the way I see it so far, it's Crap. really bad. Real bitterly disappointing, but nevertheless. QAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes? Neil, I tell you, I've been on the mobile ice. Cut me off every time at 15 minutes. Because i got the screen list there going. Right. You know? Anyway, I don't care. Neil, listen, I... Uh, you're well worth it. You know that your show doesn't compare to anybody else's show. You, you know, so all these callers calling in and saying, "Oh, Hank's this, or Hank's that." You know, that, that the thing about the sports guys is they need to have some like special guests or something like that. You know, to maybe beef it up a bit. I mean, yeah. you know, because they're, they're just boring. You know, people call in saying they're boring. It's so true. Yeah, terminal yeah, is they, the word you're looking for. Terminal, because because when you start relying on the callers in this town for sports stuff, I mean, uh, what do these people know about sports? Nothing. No, let's, but let's what I'm look. saying is, you know, to make their show better, they should have some special guests, like yeah. more athletes calling in or, right. or stuff like that. Well, that's, you know when Hank, that's when I think Hank is at his best when he's got the guests on. Not not like Will Clark. That was one of those things. But uh, most of the other time, when he knows what he's talking about. No, but Neil, you're our comedy savior. I love you. I've been listening to you since you've been down here. I've been down here 24 years. I love you. You're the best. And may God bless you. Don't yes, ever leave town. And, and God bless you. And yours. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. That's what I always say. May God bless yours. WQAM. Neil. Yeah. Yes, sir. How you doing today, bud? Great. Hey, listen about the uh, two to six uh, segment with uh, Mandich and uh, the Hummer. Yeah. I think the Hummer goes, Mandich stays. But anybody who listens during that time, as El Goldstein would say, it's a gay club, you moron. They're looking for glory holes. Okay, WQAM. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. Um, well, first, I want to say that you know, I think I know why uh, everybody doesn't listen to Ed's show at night. Because I tell you what, you know, when me and my buddies were growing up, and Ed used to be on the other station and everything like that. Yeah, and I used too, to, yeah. We used to crank that guy like crazy. You know, and I mean, really. I mean, that was, you know, that was probably the most entertaining part of the show. Uh -huh. And now, the only entertainment I get from his show is masturbating to it every night. Right. So, but, well, you know, well, your now, show... Now, let me ask you this. When we got the, when the Marlins are playing on the West Coast, do you stay up late till about 2 or 3 in the morning to do it? No, oh. Heck no, no way. There's no way. I never. I would never. Actually, you know, this week I've been uh, not listening to uh, Ed so at all. Words, so in other words, on those nights you let it heal up. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, you know, that night I have to kind of use uh, glory holes. I uh -huh. kind of like give a little, you know, little extra pleasure. Right. But, all right. Love okay. you, Neil. I'll see you at Westland. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this thing with glory holes, I mean, I was talking to somebody yesterday who uh, really knows about these things, and he said, I've done a tremendous pubic service in alerting the entire South Florida area, even over there on the West Coast. I bet you in Fort Myers there's a lot of glory holes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because on those weekends when their sheep get real testy, you know, when they get kind of like worn out and surly, there's nothing like uh, screaming for old glory. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. All right, here it is. Worst team, crap. Neil, God. Hank, crappy God. Ricky Martin screaming flamer. Yeah. And video search of Miami, maggoty douchebags. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever you say. I thought he was going to talk about that other video guy. Boy, remember he sent us, uh, was he the one that sent us that big black penis? Which yeah. we're not mentioning his name on here who sent it to us. But we're sure enjoying it here, by the way. It's kind of like vibrating over there on the uh, counter. All by itself. It's just moving around. Because some people in the building thinks it remind, think that it reminds them of Roy. WQAM. On my radio, sometimes I feel life is passing me by. Yeah. Sometimes I feel myself. All right. Excellent. Well, we got some good singers out here today. 
Sign him up. Okay, get what's his name on the phone? Uh, Big Papa, whatever his name is. I mean, he lost the Backstreet Boys. They finally decided they want to get some of the money for themselves, so they fired his ass. His faggoty ass. QAM, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I can't believe that caller a few times ago wants cops to be handing out tickets at the fire lane. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on that. Yeah, I'm I mean, not that big on that. That guy's a complete and total idiot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, if, you're, if you park there for like 30 seconds, and I've seen that happen too, and they come along, they you know, play well, push balls. You know. Cops don't have enough to do already, but right. he wants them. Uh, oh, God. You were talking about twins the other day? Yeah. I'm an identical twin. Really? We're 32. Yeah. I'm bigger than he is, and we're both gay. Yeah, did you hear that? You're talking to the Culligan man, but here's a guy's an identical twin. They're both 32, and they're both gay, only this guy's got a larger penis, so he says. Well, a little bit. It's slightly bigger. Yeah, the doctor was little meaner to him. But. Right. Cut on a bias. <laughs> so that's it. I, I, mean, I, I remember yeah. a long time ago when you and Hank did hate each other like poison. We called you, uh, you were stiff in charities. You were right. poison pen. Yeah. And you were a piece of crap. And then right. you said Hank is no good. Yeah. So I guess you kissed and made up. We kissed and made up, yeah. Okay. From a distance, though. Yeah. Okay. So he said his uh, brother is uh, something. <laughs> Uh, that's what he said. He said uh, his is a little bigger than his brother's and his uh, <laughs> too. Ten, so what was the Culligan man doing there? What are they uh, all about? Do we need any cups? Thank you for bringing us more water, but do we need any cups? And I said, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, because we got to take care of the people here on the weekend. There's some important people hanging around here on the weekend, by the way, I understand. I may actually start hanging out here on the weekend. 10 before 2 at 560 WQM. Here's